Be the right club today. Yeah. I mean, that's better than most. How about him? That is better than most. Better than most. Expect anything different? Oh, welcome in to the No Laying Up Golf Podcast. My name is Randy. TC, we retained them, baby. We put, retained put them. retainers on all of them. We rocked them. Woo! We rocked them. You know what? People are saying, oh, you guys are celebrating a tie. I've never seen anybody celebrate a tie like this. The cup is with one team. And which team is that, Randy? Europe. It is. Europe. It is. It stays with Europe. It's, we'll like, get- it's like a heavyweight bout. You know, you, you, you don't get the belt. Unless you unless you beat the champ. You gotta knock the champ out. You're not gonna win on a split decision. 
The cup stays in Europe. 14-14 is where we ended the day, right back where we started Friday morning, all knotted up. We'll get into all of it. Let me introduce, of course, Tron Carter to, to my left, my far left, Mr. Neil Schuster. Neil, good evening. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm well. I'm a little worn out. Congrats on your retention. Thank you. That's exciting. 14-14. Uh, uh, We're proud of it. Thank shout you. Shout out to the U.S. team for not losing. It reminded me of uh, the merch that you made a couple years back for the Ryder Cup. Yeah. Well, what did that say on it? It said retained in the USA, <laughs> which was wrong for a couple reasons. I didn't really know what thought we were going to. Well, I didn't really think that one through. But you can, I think there's still some <laughs> left in the pro shop. You should check it out. <laughs> Uh, get you a good deal on yeah those. you probably could they might be in the sales section we haven't sent those to a foreign country yet. <laughs> no we haven't uh there's still some of those no but it, exciting day of golf i was out on the course all day from the start to the finish great experience first time at the solheim cup excited to talk about it awesome last but not least the guy behind really everything this week the hardest working guy on our crew Mr. Cody McBride. Cody, how are you tonight, Sarge? Very, very good. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate it, too. The reason why we, we waited a little bit longer is because, number one, we wanted to take in both the losing team, unfortunately, the United States team. Oh, the one that was the losing team. Freudian. Correct. Look, they didn't lose, Cody. I mean, they lost. <laughs> they didn't. We'll, they tied. We'll that. One team well, celebrated. We'll get, into it. we'll get into it. And, of course, the winner's press conference. Uh, we did that. We came back here. We made the executive decision. We had, did, thankfully. Yes, we. There's nothing worse than hungry rangers. We we needed to get food in our belly. We've been eating so late the last couple of nights. So yeah, we went, as is the Spanish custom. And so we went and had yeah. dinner, and well, the dinner took two hours, <laughs> as is the as Spanish is. custom. <laughs> How they do. So things. now we're we're kicking off this live show here at eleven o'clock p.m. It's okay. We're we're gonna run it through. Oh, we I got. Forgot, I forgot we actually got to go to the start the clock, but. We have to go to the airport here in a couple hours, so we're kind of working up <laughs> we, against a time. We gotta line. go to the European team party, and then we gotta go to the airport. <laughs> correct, correct. Dinner was good though. I was very excited. A little thirsty though. Reminded me though. Oh, he's what a I pro. missed most. I knew some sips, baby. Tequila is back. If you're a tequila lover and you're never satisfied with malt-based hard seltzer offerings, you can now. You're going to love the new high noon tequila seltzer. It's available nationwide, just not in this nation. Made with real Blanco, real juice, clean finish because it's made with real Blanco tequila. That's white tequila for non-Spanish speakers. Correct. 100 up calories, a hundred calories, gluten free, no added sugar. We love that. Right it also there. has alcohol in it. It does. Which, unlike the beer oh, that Randy well, bought this yeah, week, I bought a case of non-alcoholic beer on accident. I can't. I'm not a sin, Spanish speaker. Sin alcohol. <laughs> what did you? What did you Alih say? To her? Sin Alihambras. Well, we had a big language gap, and okay. uh, there were a few beers, and I just kind of pointed at one. I had to say, uh, <laughs> Randy, up, like, Randy grunted and said, "Survey <laughs> signing." I, yeah, I was signing. I said, I held he, up a two and then a four, and then he said, "High noon tequila sunsips." <laughs> She said, no, I'm she blind said, glass. No, 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 no. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll tell you. And it was non alcoholic. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I would have loved to have had some high noons over here. What flavor do you crave the most? Um, honestly, I, I go for the the fruits, the, the exotic fruits, what I you think are exotic. Fruit guy? Well, guava, passion fruit. Like those but are the, my the, yeah, tequila, though. Oh, the tequila. Yeah. Um, honestly, anything. I was really curious about the tequila. <laughs> no, like. What's I celebrate. I celebrate oh, Michael Bolton's yeah. entire tequila? collection. Like, what's your favorite tequila? Lime. The lime. Okay, good yeah, scroll too, down babe. there. Uh, tequila <laughs> comes in four flavors: strawberry, lime, grapefruit, passion fruit. High news: great for any occasion fruit. under the sun, guy. and there's no better I'm time to help you than now to try new high noon tequila seltzer. Look for them wherever you shop: Drizzly, your local convenience store, liquor store, or visit highnoonspirits.com to find a location near you. Cody, I'm going to keep it right on you, man. Solheim Cup in the books. Just talk to me about instant, not instant, but, but what, what are your what are your high level thoughts? Where does your mind go to first? 14 14. It was a tie. Europe retains the cup. Uh, it's not. Oh, first of all, I was out with Neil. We were, we were out on patrol all day today. Watched, I bounced around between quite a few groups, but really focused in watching Nelly play. And I, honestly, this afternoon I didn't know I, I didn't know we were gonna lose. No, I didn't oh, know the numbers you, were shaking out that way. I was truly shocked. Yeah, all the way until we we saw them, the the yeah. putt go in on seventeen. I was like, wait a second, wait, 
How, what do you Wait, mean? How? Yeah. Well, like Lex when they stormed the then. green, I was like, "What are they doing?" <laughs> Everything <laughs> my, broken, contained. My high, high level thought, and and we're gonna get to this, and we're gonna get to her and her phenomenal play. But like Caroline Headwall and what she did on this back nine, like that kind of went completely over my head, and, and that was kind of the, the the defining moment here on the Saturday. Randy and I's uh, jaws were on the it. fucking floor. I was gonna say, TC, <laughs> yeah. you and I were in the media center by that point. We were kind of watching the big TV, trying to keep up with all the action. I mean, talk to me about the scene in the media center and, and kind of what you'll remember and, and the high level takeaways you have. Huggy told me that you guys were singing Ole, 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 Ole <laughs> in there. Everybody's um, getting pissed. Yeah, no, I, no guilty cut, you're a bad guy. Guilty as charged. No, it was uh there were a couple, I think like a third of the way through, it was kind of iffy. Then things started going really well for Europe. Then they didn't. And then all of a sudden, Caroline Headwall completely from, took over. From nowhere. She was three down with six to play against Ali Ewing and one two up. The the three wood that she hit into 18, the the putts that she made. Oh. It, it was I've like it was one of the greatest perform it was one of the greatest golf performances I've ever seen, considering the circumstances and the moment. And it was it was so impressive, especially because she sat the first three matches and didn't play until yesterday afternoon. And the emotion that she was showing, it 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 I mean you guys know I'm I'm kind of a cynic. Like not much gets my juices flowing. Except for right? blocky. Except sure. for blocky, of course. There are the odd moments here and there. But but the charge that Caroline Headwell made, Headwall, excuse me, made. And I think what really did it for me was seeing the emotion that she played with and the emotion that was just outpouring from her. And that is such a special thing. Because in a team environment like the Solheim Cup, that's where it's elevated above any individual stroke play competition. It really was one of the coolest six hole stretches of, of that I've ever watched. And I'm like, is that hyperbolic? Like, no, like truly that uh, that you could I would put that up there against anything in my lifetime in terms of like, holy shit, is this happening? And this is amazing. Totally agree. And it was it was in the midst of or right after Georgia Hall kind of like Georgia Hall just couldn't get the ball in the hole. She gagged like a two footer on 17. She, she three putted from like 10 feet. Yeah. And and you know, missed a lot of other putts that day. And and Angel Yin had just like she was shut the door. Shut the door on yeah. Celine. Uh, Cheyenne scratched out a half with with Gemma. I mean, it, it true, like Cody, you said it was. Like we were like, oh God, no, the US is gonna win this. Uh Ali Ewing's in control. Nelly's Lexi, coming back on Carlotta. Yeah, Lexi's in control of that last match. And then there was Caroline. And that was nuts. Neil, what sticks out to you? Well, I first time, like I said earlier, first time at the event, I really wanted to be out among the people, uh, experience the event firsthand, which is a bit of it's a bit bittersweet because I didn't get to see any of this, right? But uh, I'm like, well, I'm I'm here flew halfway across the world to be here. So I was like, I made a, uh, a, a decision after lunch. I was like, I'm going to go out to 15. Cause I felt like that stretch of 15 through 18 gave me the best chance. Like maybe the, I was thinking maybe the U S closes it out, but they're not going to do it before 14 based on where the matches stood. But I was like, Oh, Lexi's way up. You know, Nelly doesn't look like she's doing well. So it's probably going to come down to 15 at the earliest. And so then I can follow in from there which I think now looking back was a good place to be. It's a fun hole to watch. Uh, it's a tough shot into that green. I got to watch all of these groups come through. And at no point on 15, like 15 was the only hole in those last six that Headwall didn't do she anything. Made par, right. yeah, she made par. She birdied every other like, one. Okay, you know, yeah. but the pads were popping. I told you that. There's spice out there from everyone else. And there's, we've had a lot of golf course takes. We had a lot of, of this overall area and kind of some organizational management stuff. So we'll many catch till. basins. We'll get there. <laughs> Um, but I think like the way that they set up this course, I think the drama that we got from 15, 16, 17, and 18 is what made this finish here. Not even, even, even 14. Amazing. 14, moving the tee up on 14 yeah. was yeah. was like 14 and 15 were topsy-turvy all day. They did a great job with the setup, I thought, both tees and 
doing some pins that weren't like great, great pin on 17, but also pins that were up on shelves, but weren't necessarily inaccessible. Either. Yeah, there was I a agree. difference between a good shot and a great shot. And you brought up 18 and you said no to 18. Well, I think just it's because you missed it. Because I missed them, it. But like, yeah. I think of Cheyenne's match. I think of Ali's match. You know, I, I think there's that whole mattered here. And a lot of match play courses that you play, like, you know, 18s is kind of an afterthought here, but man, but 15, uh, six, 16. Hell yeah. yeah. And 17 today was awesome. Great I little mean, pin over there. And it, yeah. it was, it was so perfect. Well, so what stood well out to me though, was uh, the, the, the defining shot I saw today was uh, as, as the crowd was chanting, Carlota Segunda. Ooh. So that was good. That was the chant going through the entire course. She shanked one on 15. Sick. Cold shank from the Sick. fairway up we, into a tree. Will, will you do the Maya Stark chant? Like up into a tree. Did it stay in the tree? No, but like I'll right under it. it. And she dumped it and then she chipped it out to the front bunker. And then she, uh, Nelly just got up and down. And, and so Nelly takes it back to all square. All square. And it was like, whoa, we're going to 16. So I followed that group to 16. And Nelly hit a great drive and a great second shot. And the two shots that Carlota Segunda hit in Segunda. It. Segunda. You know, I know. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. I'm, I was going off the chant. I know. Uh, I mean, she stuffed the pinata for sure on 16 and and I think kind of rattled Nelly. And then the shot on well, 17. You didn't see Nelly's shot either. I, Nelly's ball ran over the lip. Oh, I didn't see the I didn't see the putt up close. I was at, no no her shot in. I was oh, did it really? The approach yeah. shot was fabulous. And she no, because I saw from the fairway, and it was like oh she went first. It was like oh my yeah. god, she's she's about to like you know harvest some organs here. Like she's, right. she's gonna she's gonna break this girl's heart. Because if I can interject, as good as organs, as good as the head wall. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. souls. It's harvesting souls, 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 souls organs, organs, souls, whatever. As good as the head wall comeback and, and earning <laughs> so, that point was, was, a little, was a lot. It was only gonna matter if Maya Stark won her match and Saganda won her match. And so when, as Neil, as you said, when Nelly squares it up on fifteen, and Cody, as you say, when Nelly hits an yeah. awesome approach shot into sixteen. Playing before Carlotta, it's like, oh, wow, holy shit. It, it might not even matter. The, the U.S. might have this. And then that was so big for her to get the honor on 17. And then, again, just step up and hit it to four feet. And the uh, the kind of Coliseum, the fans on 17 were awesome. Like, that's probably the best golf shot that I've seen in person this year, right? Like, of just yeah. the the vibe. It, I mean, just a lot of, a lot of play here. Yeah. National nationalism stuff the kings there we saw the king the big homies out there i know, it's, I know it's a thrill for you guys yeah, it was. i mean yeah. i was like the guy's a he's unit, a unit. Yeah. he's got a security detail which cody had some which, concerns about no we'll yeah. get to that later i, I want to touch in, on in that an incredible theater the way it was that, a like, great theater that's well know, said the hospitality up on the top right but yeah. the bunkers in the mounting you had people like nine ten deep at some spots i agree with you and to step up in a big time shot it was the the like the cleanest pierced iron shot i've heard this entire week yeah and it was just just like straight trash draw yeah nice it just really ripped. tight draw it, it didn't really leave the flag stick no it, it just started on an awesome line and kept moving towards the flag it was awesome and then she got so hyped with her captain it just all of them are riding for their captain i mean it's truly like well i want to get into that yeah let's, like it was yeah, it was cool to see on the t and then, yeah, Nelly. She didn't hit a bad shot, but she didn't really. She didn't. She didn't do what she needed to there. She didn't answer. answer but then, all. But the, then, the putt was atrocious on sixteen, and then yeah. on seventeen. Well, I didn't realize that was, approach went that close to the hole. Yeah, it was because it looks six, great from the fairway. Feet. No, no, I I knew it ended up six to seven feet, but you're saying it ran by the hole. Like oh, it, yeah, it was like right on the flag. Yeah, because it looked awesome the whole way. Um, I think but, a defining moment is is Team Europe. Basically celebrating and dictating that we don't care if it's a fucking yeah, tie. True. We yeah. won Hold this on. thing. That was fucking so wild. Can we unpack that? Can we unpack that? What they the just fuck asserted was going on? themselves and said, "You know what? Like we are, we that, are, we, well, we, you know, we still haven't forgotten Brookline. Exactly, Randy. That was exactly. revenge for Brookline. Well, just, Jose Maria, who was I, here this week. When I was out on fifteen, so we, we had been. Uh, I felt like then. the That's U.S. was in control. They memories. got up. They got up to thirteen eleven. And it felt like it was there for like 45 minutes. And I was like, oh, man, the, I'm thinking this whole time the Euro team is in trouble. 
And I never flipped out of that mindset. Like I, I that was head wall. I know, was, and that's yeah, the I thing. know you guys because like, Angel Yin's charge, and I'm like, oh, yeah. that's like they're the U.S. is in the driver's seat. All you need is a point and a half, and they couldn't get it. So the the celebration. Walk me through because that's the one thing TC and I couldn't really see much of. You, you were you around when yes. they started celebrating after we were, Carlotta? Uh, we were, out we were standing Neil, behind Nelly's parents. Yeah, Neil and I were literally shoulder to shoulder, like. I, I stood behind them just to take a picture because I'm like, oh shit, like <laughs> Nelly's probably going to chip this in. Like and she came damn close. Like yeah. this, is ne- yeah. this is Nelly's moment. I was like, she's, she's been playing good. She fought her way back into this match. She, you know, had obviously Carlotta made like an awesome birdie the whole before, but like, this is her moment. Like I thought she was going to step up and do this and hit the chip and went up and just, you know, well then, so, all right, so make the putt. So here's so what happens. happens. We see it go in, and and Carlota freaks out. You know, she starts hugging her caddy, and I'm like, "Oh, she's jacked up." And then all of a sudden, all of Team Europe comes running down <laughs> you the just hill. Thought it was yeah. like we're to the left of the green, one. and they yeah. came from the back, pack, right? pack of dolls. And I'm like, <laughs> "Well, we knew it was a big and, point." And she first, knew it was a big sure. point. Well, Suzanne ran out, and I'm thinking like, "Oh, maybe like the captain's just jacked up," and the whole team falls. <laughs> I was like, "Well, that's kind of weird. Like, they haven't won it yet." And right. I look what back, done here? and then I'm like, "Oh, wait, they got to 14. Well, it was, we have a we have a retention issue. We we have." You know, that was the first time today you mentioned that word. We, retain, we have a and retaining like, wall. What are you talking about? I was dog? like, they just retained the cup. Now, the issue here is that when that happened, so all the, the European team and caddies and, you know, they everybody has like a fucking million family and friends passes that are still inside the ropes. They all rush on the green. Well, and the camera guys then follow. Lexi, yeah. They are dogs on a bone. Oh, They're oh, like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And not just like we're not talking about like just television people, no. you know, all, all the, the photo influencers, yeah. you yeah. name it out there. <laughs> well, what happened is that a lot of people Neil's like running out with it. No, no, we were still there. Thing. We're yeah. wa- we're watching Nelly's dad almost get duffed by the honorary raker. <laughs> this guy's going nuts, man. So what happened is that all these like people were afraid that they're missing out on all the little fucking content kings running around. So they started running through <laughs> bunkers. It's the, tra- yeah. it's the tragedy of the commons. So we're on the other side of Nelly's parents. We're like the little, uh, the volunteer rate crews. And so they start like walking out. What they weren't paying attention to is that they started like walking, like panicking, like, oh God, we got to go rake these bunkers. Because whoever their supervisor was like, hey, there's still a match behind them. You got to clean right. this shit up. You got to get it under control. They come rushing out. And you know, when you're holding like a, some a broom, a shovel, or whatever, it's kind of log handle. Oh, yeah, you don't well, really Nelly's realize. Dad yeah, was walking in front of him at the same time and literally like almost took his shoulder off. Yeah, and it, he turned, it, he was not and happy. This look and said something in Spanish or one of the other five <laughs> languages, 11 languages. It was incredible, but he was so fucking pissed <laughs> and he gave him the look back like four different times. But you know. They're out he was, there no, he was, It was kind of one of those, like, walking out at, like, when you see those NFL videos, guys, like, walking out of the football game looking for a fight. Will? He, I, was, I, he was pissed. I think that one of the big questions is, will the old school, crusty European journalist. John Huggin. Hold things of that nature. the European team to account. Hold, hold back. Reel, reel that one in. <laughs> Explain the situation here. Well, because most, well, it, I mean, obviously, going back to Brookline, that was just. It was a travesty. They, they were apoplectic, disgusting. that Team USA rushed onto the green after uh who was it leonard leonard <laughs> sunk the putt um and there any, were still any, matches on the course behind right any references from this decade and then literally three weeks ago at the walker cup uh our guy corrigan wrote a headline when team usa clinched the walker cup at san andrews apparently one of the usa teammates just a teammate ran on who wasn't playing in the match ran on and um god i forget who it was, Nick Dunlap, maybe, or it was Caleb Surratt who ran onto the green, and the USA guy gave him a high five before shaking hands with with his opponent. Disgusting. Just and a they said massive it, dab. They said it, it it completely marred the water. <laughs> the entire it, competition. It, it overshadowed the US comeback on Sunday. Well, I walked back into the media center. I went to the restroom real quick. I walked back in and I said, Randy, they've totally lost track of this, this Lexi. Match because we're thinking, all right, this is going to be. Yeah, TC's like, why won't they show this fucking Lexi match? Because Lexi's up three. I think she had just gone up four, and then it was back down to three. And then Lexi and Emily are are coming in, and and it's like, hey, this could come down to Lexi. And then Randy's like, TC, shut up. This is for the cup. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you're right. This is to tie. But like, 
but at first I was like, who gives a shit about a tie? Like, let's go. Like, I want to see if Lexi Thank can, you. can, but, but then I realized that they already held the cup and how the rules are written and you got to come. You gotta everybody come knows the rules at the beginning Clean of the week. Dead hands. And Samuel Ryder, Karsten Solheim, exactly. and their infinite wisdom. It's like the U.S. Constitution. Exactly. You know, Randy? The, uh, We're thought, constitutionalists, TC, you and <laughs> you I. You, me, Clarence Thomas. Exactly. I used to write a lot of policy memos by doing a little, like, you know, control, uh, select all, <laughs> control C, control P, change, like, the title. I'm pretty sure that's what the Solheim dog did <laughs> for this one here. So don't put those things in the was, same room. Neil was saying that John Solheim looked like the Jurassic Park. <laughs> which is a great take. He looks like the great Jurassic take. Park founder. One of your best takes. Yeah. I would the say professor? The guy that the the from, from the first one with the hat, you know, that Solheim Cup founder, Jurassic Park the, founder. He, you know, he's a big visionary thinker, but then things yeah, got kind of out of hand. Thinker. I was just then the say, Raptors I think Samuel got Ryder and and Carson Solheim, blue flame thinker. Yeah, then the, the Raptors started checking the fences and they got out. <laughs> it's bad. Which Leona McGuire started checking the fences and she got out. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, you that's yeah, that's a good segue. Um, Let's get into the matches. Let's let's talk about. Obviously, we know where we and, ended. and listen, folks. We are gonna we we're gonna eviscerate the the broadcast, right? We're like, we're gonna we're, we're gonna we, call we for people's know, jobs. We know how shitty like the, it was. The ladies' European tour is like CEO needs to resign tomorrow. Like it was that bad. So we'll get there. Believe me, we share your vitriol because everybody is probably screaming at their phone or their computer right now saying this sounds awesome i would have loved to have seen even a quarter of this but i yes. think it's important to, to share like the, totally. the personal experience i'm just saying I'm just i, I would like to people. say one one more thing like about being out there on the course was uh and and comparing it to the Ryder cup it's a much more intimate experience without the uh grandstands everywhere like 15 was packed with people and but everybody's sitting in the grass and it just feels a lot more communal to watch, but it's still high stakes and there's passion. It was, yeah. it was really good. It was really good. It was spread. It was probably a little too spread out. So I've had a lot of FOMO and I missed a lot. Sure. But I think I'll look back fondly on like the, you know, two and a half hours I well, had that. Th and that's, today. you know, one of the shames, I know we're going to get to like a Amsterdam. We can unload on a lot of things, but you very much set this up to, to not talk about it. <laughs> well, no, I just quickly on that point that the lack of <laughs> distributing, radio earpieces to people like that yeah would that would help a lot of course well oh, one well, woman look. behind me was playing it like she would like turn up the volume on her phone and everybody was like so yeah. it almost turned into like a communal thing of like what's that headwall's doing what because it does stink when yeah. you're like out on the course but you don't feel like you know what's going on in the broader tournament i will say this too randy you were on bbc radio this week i was on bbc radio this week shout out to our bbc radio hitters but why didn't you just listen to the radio on your phone? Because there's no fucking cell service anyway. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's, yeah. it's horribly throttled. We got off so, like, they were, we were making all sorts of coughs between Headwall and, like, Rudy. She's, like, the last player on the team. She's Rudy, Rudy the Rudy Rudiger, the Notre Dame guy. Or, like, well, we you know, or like a like fullback. Mike, like, Mike or, like Yeah. He's, and, Colbert yeah. Report. he's doing the dirty work behind the scenes. Nobody, nobody. No, I said she went through 15. And the and she established the run. Yeah, I, I was Plus I was yards. Yeah, excited to popping pads all day. Yeah, definitely. And then definitely. she got in the open field and they like gave her a little swing route or a little they, they like little pop her out on that. Yeah, yeah Allie Ewing did not wrap up. No. Yeah. No. Which yeah, that's that was that was tough. Well, let's get let's get into the matches. Like I said, we know where we finished 14 14, but let's kind of talk 14 through, 14, but the but you know the retaining on the back of two wins coming into this. So it was even like, yeah. if there was any question, if, if the US or if, if Europe had won the last one, they won the last two. Everybody shut up. They won the last two. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, I, we're we're going to go through the matches in order of how they finished on the course. All right. And the first one that finished was Leona Maguire winning four and three over Rose Zhang. This gave Europe a nine to eight lead. First impressions, TC. I mean, what do you got from this match? Leona just like went out and took it. She there was no questions asked. There was no doubt. There was no. She was draining putts from the start. She made a bomb on what was that fourteen for eagle? I think. Yeah. Yes, she did. It, it was like Rose. I don't think stood a chance. I think Rose probably struggled a little bit. Whether it was the moment, her putting, the Bermuda grass. She's a West Coast girl. I don't think she's got a ton of experience on 
playing on grainy Bermuda grass. Uh, whatever it was, Leona just you know, conquered her today. She got to fix that shit. It was a bad, bad, bad event for Rose. Her putting yeah. was oh two and one horrible. Oh two and she one, yeah, a not a good, a not a good debut. And, and I don't think today though she didn't. I watched. I bounced between this and Danielle Kang and Charlie Hole. They were playing um, in back to back groups, and it just felt like Leona just didn't let her up for for air. <laughs> she just had her like head underwater Leona's from the start. A complete just terminator it, now. Yeah, she. It was really impressive, and and I but just. Rose today didn't play well, but she also didn't. You got to bring it. It, it was it was kind of yeah. like she just wasn't ready for it. And they sent her out second. That was the second match today, mm -hmm. right? It's like that's a big spot. Go set the tone. And she didn't. No, she didn't. So uh, you got to do better. Leona went three and two on the week. Got three points on the heels of uh, her debut two years ago, where she got four and a half points. I mean, she played five sessions, and to deliver this performance in singles was. Crazy on crazy Sunday impressive. after playing all five, all like the previous yeah. four sessions. Yeah, it's it's insane. Neil, the last thing with this match, I, I think you said, do we need to kind of slow down the Rose talk? Has that gotten out of control? I mean, is that a conversation? We I need don't to have? want there to be too much recency bias. She won her first event on the LPGA tour, which deserves to be like celebrated for at least throughout the, the rest of the season, I think. But, uh, yeah, it wasn't a good debut in in the Solheim Cup. I I think she's got to get back in the lab and not uh, not rest on past achievements at this point, right? Yeah, I think that's fair. I, I don't feel like I'm not super confident, and I think we said this earlier this week, but she doesn't look comfortable on the putting green, like uh, with the putter. It just looks a little stiff. It looks a little, um, I don't know, like mathematical or. Well, and and even even her ball striking, she was she just was more offline than I've ever been used to seeing her. You know, spraying yeah. some drives, spraying some irons. Hey, Cody, I mean, what what do you think? Is it like are are we sounding the alarm about Rose? Is this like, hey, she might just be exhausted after a crazy last like six months? What what's your take? Uh, I don't think we need to sound the alarm i don't think so but i think i was pretty uh, i was this is what we got into when we were at the aig women's open as well as i didn't i didn't feel that it was necessary to put this crazy thing on him i think you called her potentially a, a generational talent we, I, I, we I need to call all sorts of people generational yeah, talent i stand so. by a generational talent i mean hell look at her amateur resume maybe the best ever and then it it, it was kind yeah, of shaping up that way when you win your first Ben is a professional. I mean, that's a like historic thing. And, and I mean, she's just been kind of a terminator. It's just, I guess the, the point is it's almost just a bummer. You're like, Oh man, we thought we were yeah. going to, we had, you have high hopes for Rose to come in and just keep doing what she's been doing for the last, you know, two, three years. We got 12 matches. So we I got, know. we got, it, it is I, worth with all this conversation. Yeah. She's three and a half months into her pro career. Yeah. So. Like she's like the, basically the same amount of time in her pro career as Ludwig is. Yeah. And hopefully yeah. it's, uh, this doesn't portend, like, I think Ludwig's going to kill people next week. But. So they played 15 holes in this match. Rose had three birdies, a couple bogeys. Leona had five birdies and an eagle. It's tough. I mean, she just got beat. Like, I don't think she completely gassed it. She just got outclassed. Which, as we sure. learned and, last and night. And obviously, like, there's, I don't know what her total putts was. That, that would be great to know if any, any company out there wants to improve stats here. But, she she missed a lot of very makeable putts. Sure. Second match in the books was the first match out. Megan Kang defeated Lynn Grant one up. This squared the the Solheim Cup at nine nine. So I followed. I'll, I'll lead off because I yeah. went and followed this group for the first six holes or so. A um, couple of things. Megan Kang right from the jump just had a look about her. She she was determined. She was locked in. I mean, I don't know how else to explain it. She made like a six-foot birdie putt on one. She made like an eight-foot birdie putt on two. She birdied three of her first four holes to go two up on Lynn Grant and just played flawless golf throughout the day. Made six birdies, no bogeys, and just simply did not open the door for Lynn Grant. And Lynn is going to take an L here, and it goes against her Solheim career record. But Lynn played really well. She made one bogey. Right. And th this was 
such a wonderful match. Uh, Megan, what is 25? Lynn's 24. I mean, this is a match. They're that both sort of late bloomers a little bit, considering the age in the women's game, right? I think Lynn's going to take this one hard, but probably use it as fuel for the future. Megan's Megan went, what, 3 Three zero and two, I think, this week. She only played four sessions. I believe she went three zero and three zero and one. Like yeah. that's, I mean, that, that's that's as, about as good as it gets. She was just as impressive as Leona was on the other side. It, it was Megan was the tone setter for the U.S. team the entire week. It was and start to finish, like Europe got off to a really good start. Those first three or four matches, they birdied the first hole and like jumped out and were one up on I think the first three or four matches through one and then kept the pedal down those first three or four holes. And then both US, of them, the U S birdie. No, I'm not, sorry. I'm saying the U S like yeah, came yeah. out just like, Hey, we're going to, we're going to set the tone today. And Megan was a huge catalyst for that. And then didn't let her foot off the gas. And like, I mean, both of them made matching birdies on 18. Lynn made like gave it a really good go for Eagle to, to tie the match. And Megan hit a good shot into the, the left green side bunker in two, Lynn hit a great second shot in and just, you know, just the putter cooled off a little bit. And that's all it was. Megan's short game was fantastic. Yeah. Her yeah, it's, it's, chipping and pitching was incredible. She's taken a leap like the last three months or so. Well, it's not just that at uh, Women's British, she had a, a very bad Sunday that, I mean, she was, she started in like the third to last group and really just, didn't make a pot the entire time. And I actually, I flew back from London on the same flight with her and talked to her in, in the lounge prior to, and then talked a little during the flight. And then when we got into Boston and she's like, yeah, I'm hitting the ball so good. Like I just have zero confidence right now with my putter. Huh. And I'm like, huh? And then you look and you're like, oh, Canada, Portland, Cincinnati. Like you saw this momentum coming yeah. with her, obviously getting her first, win finally on the lpga tour big breakthrough and then bringing all of that here into an event where like she's such like a jovial like team player like this is this is tailor made for her but i think we'll get to it at the end but like people who use team events like this to really like help catapult them to like what the next level of their you know success in their career is going to be i think this is just going to add to hers amen i i had that same and, and note written worth noting that she was one of the three players that uh Captain Stacy Lewis brought into the press conference. Yeah. Which I think is leader and indicative of, you know, a few things. But one is a, a you know, she played really well and a leader on the team. Guys, I, I don't want to, you know, keep this about the vision fund, but there were all sorts of bets this year on what on was Megan the third Kane. match off? <laughs> Thank you, Randy. Neil. We were just uh, a little early on it. Randy. The third match was Danielle Kang. She won four and two over Charlie Hall. This gave the U.S. a ten to nine lead. Um, I spent I spent nine holes with this. Well, match. then please, why, yeah. why? Because I thought it was a dynamic matchup. I've heard two big someone, personalities. That's what I'm saying. As somebody who like candidly doesn't watch anywhere near as much LPGA as you guys do. These are two names that I know that I wanted to see up close, and I've never, I've never really watched either of them up close. It just didn't seem like Charlie was primed to give it. Well, I thought she played game. really well she yesterday did. in the afternoon, so that's why I wanted to go okay. see. Like, okay, let's see what happens here. It's it's third match of the day, and I would say what stuck out to me is Danielle Kang looked extremely comfortable. She looked like a pro. She was in control of her environment. You know what I mean? Like basically what we were saying about Rose was like, I just don't feel like Rose is going to make anything. I feel like Danielle is going to make everything. Yeah. And so she jumped out early and it felt like Charlie hole was fighting it a little bit with the driver. She missed one huge miss with the three wood on number eight. And she got real, like she started to get really pissed off mm. and you could just tell Danielle was just like, kind of, she feeds on that. Yeah, yeah, you know, she was almost walking ahead and and yeah. so just, just turning the screw a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And, and you could just tell it was like she got her swag back a little bit because I, I I feel like um she was like, Oh, I know how to do that. It was almost like, Oh god, I can do that. Are you serious? <laughs> like, you know, like she awakened and I was really impressed with her all week. I thought she was another one that got called in the press conference, another one that I think is a, a leader on the team, and you know, good for her. She played awesome. All three days. Also, a different tone from Danielle King from past Solheim Cups. Yeah. I know you guys experienced it in Toledo, but 
Um, this time, very much instead of like, oh, it's saying this this veteran player is the leader of this team. She was like the one out front leading the charge, being like, this is Stacy's team. We're out here playing for Stacy. And whatever Stacy says and the, the mood Stacy sets and the direction that Stacy wants to go based off whatever game plan that Stacy wants to come up with, that's where we're falling. And in the past, it's always been like, oh, Danielle's been part of this like kind of a little clique that kind of does their own thing. It's almost like this little militia that that's you know, usurp like maybe gonna stage a coup, maybe not, yeah. depending upon how things go, right? Yeah. Well, now we're all we're all part of the Allied Front now. So whatever <laughs> you know, Stacy did to get her in line, it, it's fucking. Well, up. I just also wanted to follow that match just to make sure her her mom was. <laughs> she didn't become a factor. And she she was outfitted. She was kitted up again today, but a, a little a little jebby. She wasn't oh, quite as active as she week. was. Yeah, long week. I think she might have been tired. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, who knows how many trips she had but to make early week? I give back her credit. She she yeah. has fucking uh, golf clubs. And She's stuff. out there yeah. watching every shot. She's you know. And who was it? Charlie is is it Charlie's sister? Charlie's like sister friend? and I think her aunt were out there, and they were oh. they were kitted out in Louis, you know, accessories. Char Charlie's sister wearing, her, sister. wearing her no, jersey. No free ads. Oh, no free ads. Uh, what a vibe! I, I just have two things. One quickly on Danielle. Just thinking back to, uh, you know, she she had a pretty serious health condition, a tumor like on her spine, and I, I have to think. At, at certain points, she was very doubtful that, you know, n not only maybe not play in a Solheim Cup again, but I, I would think, you know, what's my golf career going to look like? And for her to get back, come to a Solheim Cup, have a good week, it's that's cool. Uh, I, I think golf in the Solheim Cup is, is a more interesting place when Danielle is around. And then, too, I think it's a bummer that Charlie was, was kind of – hurt and, and just didn't have her a game that was apparent all three days because i do think as we saw at the u.s open as we saw at walton heath like when she's in it and she's locked on it, to me she's like one of the, the most compelling yeah. male female golfers to watch but that cuts both ways because once it's not going well she gets pouty and just she a does. little bit like check, yeah. she gets checked out and i think she checked out like mid back nine and was like cool i'm not i'm not really <laughs> I'm i don't go, really, i'm gonna go in i don't really want to be around anymore <laughs> You know, but yeah. like, hey, she didn't have it. I mean, and if she's hurt, like, good for her for finishing through the line, I guess. All right. It was 10 uh, 10 after, or it was, it was uh, 10 9 after that. It was 10 9. Next match to finish was Anna Norquist defeating Jennifer Cupcho 2 and 1. Guys, I don't have a whole heck of a lot here, except uh, Cupcho just displays no emotion. She was and hanging around. I was, I was kind of hoping she'd be a little bit of a treadstone operative this week, and she just wasn't. She, she did not bring that. I was hand up. I was wrong about that. Norquist just couldn't quite close the door. She was one up through 14. And then like, it just, but kind of same thing as yesterday afternoon. You're just kind of like, man, like get it in gear here, close the door. And then some, some shaky putts. And then she had a huge approach into 16. And, and that was like the definitive moment. And then after this, it was, it was 10, 10 after this. And then it felt like, Forever until the next points were scored. It yeah. was tied for oh, you know, an hour or so. Yeah. What do you? I, starting this week and and thinking of the big Swede, I had like serious concerns because there's a lot of tight Bermuda grass around here. Like obviously she can she can putt through a lot of it, but you know you get five six feet away and then there's that second cut that like the ball just sits down in. And she's gonna have to chip. She made her way around this golf course all week well, fucking oh, awesome i mean and she like, also went one and three <laughs> well i think that's the other thing is that like points wise won't reflect that but i think her overall like she was a tough she out did yeah for this she was not only a tough out but like she was out there too like doing assistant captain duties and yeah. like when she had seven, played four matches out, yeah. 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 she was out there like totally. busting her ass and and this is a hell of a lot better golf and and, and one or singles week. match. I think that's always like yeah. kind of an afterthought. Like, I think there's always a little bit too much importance placed in the first two days and not enough importance based on like, hey, did you go out and just handle your shit yeah. on Sunday? And it gets washed over too often because sometimes it's not cups not in the balance when your match finishes or, or whatnot. But there there were a couple instances. Uh I specifically remember one when I was with our BBC friends. I mean, Anna quite literally like putting it through sprinklers because of her refusal to chip. Yeah. I remember that shot too. Which is badass. Yeah. <laughs>
Uh, the next the next match, Georgia Hall finishing all square, having the match with Andrea Lee. This moved the score to ten and a half, ten and a half. Uh, who wants to? Who, who's got I mean, thoughts this is, here? This is the reason why Europe didn't win, like didn't win the cup outright. Yeah, yeah, these exactly these, right. two matches. It's just kind yeah. of uh, Europe let off the gas a little bit, let Andrea back in, and let Cheyenne back in this match. Specifically, Andrea though. I mean, she was two down going to 15 T um, makes a great birdie there. And then, I mean, both of them just complete stinkers on a yeah. you know, pretty easy 16th hole, I'd say. And then, I mean, Georgia missed shorties going into this. She was one up through 13. She missed some shorties. And then like, well, you know, and what then 16 got... and then 17, they both stuff it. And then she three putts from yeah, 10 feet after tough. Angela or after Andrea misses a Right, a very makeable putt. There were hints of that on 15. Georgia missed it like off the planet right. She was up on top of a retaining wall, uh, where there were metal grates up there. Foreshadowing. And she tried to get TIO relief from the metal fencing, and which the, is, the rules which official is movable. Said that no, we are not. You have to play that. Uh, I like you have the to play up the, over this, the and ground. so then she, you know, it was a kind of chipped out touch them all. She hit it long left, and they went to 16 T. That was it. What, <laughs> that, what that a, all ended quickly. What a what a fall in form though. Like this was not a good. I didn't think this was a good week at all for Georgia in in totality. I mean, she was hotter than anybody winding the clock back to the spring, late spring, I guess mid spring, and just where has her game gone? I, well, I feel she like, got hurt at inter international crown, right? right? Yes. <laughs> it it felt like. The putter would just, as the day went along, you're you're like, oh, okay, here we go again, here we go again, here we go again, and it was, it, like, it got more and more of an issue, and her confidence just started waning. And I mean, she was deflated afterwards. And you know. this is the same Georgia that we saw around Walton Heath, though, too. High, the highest of hopes, and thought that that her game, the same game that she had in the spring, was going to be there. And like, she just, yeah. it looks like she's just off all around. But the putting is is really really bad. I also want to say kudos to her. And her household, it was a true house divided this week for Ryan out there supporting Georgia, but also being like very, very kind and like hugging to the American side and like asking about where statuses of matches and everything are like, I can only imagine yeah. how that's a bit like just a, weird. That yeah, be. yeah, yeah, no doubt. I thought Andrea great. I, the record doesn't necessarily reflect it one, two and one on, on the week for her, but I thought she played really solid golf. She, she did. She, at no point looked nervous or you know like she was overmatched or the moment was too big i i was impressed with her the next match to finish so was, we're so we're what we're, after that we we're, are we're 10 and a half 10 and a half okay and the next match to finish pretty quickly on the heels of this was lilia vu taking care of madeline saxstrom she won that four and three um i watched that one finish on 15 yeah Just, madeline didn't have it i'll be honest i thought this one was going to end a lot earlier than it did yeah, i know I mean, Madeline was like, she was getting like, Lilia had her on this speed bag for a while. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And then started throwing in some like rib shots. And yeah. that. What, what she was, yeah. was she four up through four or five? Four, yeah. Four up, birdie the first four, four up through And four, then five yeah. up through seven. I, I think, think she was six five up, up through at one six point. even maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, tough. It was always a big ass for Madeline. I mean, you know, I, I think Lilia is really, really good in these types of formats. It, this was her first point on the week. Uh, TC, though, to your point, you know, went out, took care of her business. and Yeah, her. and Lily, like, yesterday, you know, her and Danielle got beat by Lynn and Carlotta. And, like, yeah. that, that, like, to me, like, that's just, like, I don't, that's not a, a stain well, on her I'm record. I don't play bad golf, but it's yeah. like, the US, had you told me, you know, start of the week, Lily is going to go one and three, I would have been pretty surprised. Totally. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, like, you know, again, great players go out and, and, handle their shit and that's what she did today and i think madeline madeline didn't have a great week i think she battled she never really looked all that comfortable out there though no it's kind of reflected her game at large this year just some highs some lows yeah. kind of inconsistent um good ball striking but got to clean up some short game stuff but yeah one one and one you know contributed and then we're 11 and a half 10 and a half after this and this is where it starts this is where it gets interesting i'm not having fun anymore randy <laughs> yeah <laughs> what's going on so the next match to finish was Angel Yin defeating Celine Boudier two and one. And this extended the U.S. lead to 12 and a half, 10 and a half. And this is really when it looked like the U.S. was going to 
was going to win. This one was right in the balance for a long time. It was going back and forth. You know, and like like Angel was up early. Celine, they were tied for a while. And I think an important thing too is for big swaths of the day, before any matches were closed out, there weren't any tied matches. Yeah, All 12 matches were one color or another. Mm -hmm. what, what do you guys want to... Cody, any thoughts one way or the other on this one? Angel, Celine? I thought Angel, again, we talked about this yesterday afternoon. She kind of turned it on and, and carried that through today. She got up pretty quick and then uh, just started making some like dumb mistakes leading to bogey. Celine didn't play like crazy, crazy bad. She just made bogey. You know, and Angel would make par, and then when Angel's making birdie, like it's it's just impossible when somebody gets that hot to try to keep up with them, and and Angel just ended up running away. Overall, though, I think Celine, you know, this is not zero oh, and three. This is not what we thought. You know, I guarantee yeah. you, Team Europe, if they said you're going to uh, retain Boo the Cup, and Celine is going to bring you in zero points for playing three sessions. We questioned this all week. Why wasn't she playing more sessions? Well, this is obviously the case. Like, something's going on. She just ain't, she didn't have it. She and, disengaged. And you kept saying her body language, even in the post match, you know, when everybody's celebrating, her body language up there in the press conference was just like, it looked like she had lost the, yeah. the Solheim Cup. Well, it, you've seen Angel when she gets all excited, she stomped all over. Her. I would feel <laughs> Angel finished. Angel eagled 14 and then bogey's, the bogey's 15 and birdie's 16 and 17 and, and closed the door. Like Celine didn't play poorly down the stretch. Like she just wasn't like she, she just wasn't going to go out and win it. It was, it was basically going to be like Angel was going to have to gas this away. I'll say specifically the, the birdie on 17 by Angel was impressive. She yeah. was well outside of Celine's mark. And rolled it right in the center, and yeah, Celine didn't make her her birdie. Neil, you were gonna say something? No, it's just awesome to hear she went for it on fourteen. It's yeah. rocking. Shout out to Angel for rocking the no laying up tail for all sure. week. All week wearing the no. Or Caddy rocking. had it strapped up on his bib. It was great. It was all. <laughs> no. It was just a thrill for me to see. The only player that was uh, out there that didn't use their team issued towel rocking that that proud no laying up <laughs> towel all week, and man, that she not only went for it, dude. Like she hit pin high, yeah. like it was an incredible drive, and then like buried the putt. Yeah. I think I, I like I think for me, Angel's one of the coolest stories of the whole LPGA year. Yes, I think for a few Amen. years we felt like, hey, Angel is this sleeping giant. She's so talented. She's so personable. She's so pleasant to be around. She's she's so fiery. She's everything I like about right. like my favorite golfers. Right and. And she's scuffled for the last couple of years. And it's ever since Chevron, it's like this burst of confidence. And she just like, you know, you know what? I'm just going to go play fucking good golf. If I can shameless self-promotion, uh, if anybody listened to the podcast with her, you know, two years ago, she was left off the Solheim Cup. And yeah. she was very open about like that was that was kind of like the reason for her existence was to make that Solheim Cup team. And when she did not get selected for that team, she, she talked about like physically her body just kind of shut down and she was sick. She couldn't get out of bed. And it really caused her to like, I, I, I need to like rethink how I live my life, how, what my mindset is and not how she lives her life, but like reevaluate her priorities in her life. Sorry. Yeah. That that's a much better way to phrase it. And to see her make this year's team to go two and one. I mean, she and she was also very mo uh, open about like she just wants to be in these big moments on the golf course and she was in one today and she came through and I think like you know having heard her say that yeah. it, it just made it really special to, to watch her. Well, and it's super easy to to kind of chalk up a player like like Angel who who has a playful side even in the pressers. Yeah. Last night putting on like the Dion shades What's and all that. When we were recording. It's, it's, yeah, but like it's you know, it's very easy to chalk up somebody like that to be in hey, she's unserious, she doesn't care all that much when she cares deeply. She just like it's this is almost like her release yeah. of not taking it too seriously and choking herself out, you know? Yeah, yeah. Amen. Uh the next match to finish was Cheyenne Knight. So she, so Randy, we are we are 12 and a half, 10 and a half currently. Yeah. And, and and I will set this up saying Gemma Dryborough was leading her match pretty much all day. 
But yeah. this match finished all square. Cheyenne Knight got the half point, and this took the score to 13 to 11 to the U.S.'s advantage. Um, Gemma was two up through all the way through 14, and then Cheyenne just wouldn't go away. I was impressed with Cheyenne all week. I was too. Very impressed. She just looked comfortable she looked the out part. there. She looked. She made putts. She didn't get too down on herself. It was not too high, not too low. It's exactly what you want out of a captain's pick. I think. Gee, this is why we play match play. When she ended up winning 15 and 16, she won those holes with pars. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so it wasn't the best golf, but she absolutely did what she needed to do. Gemma made a lot of putts. Like yeah. in that early to middle stretch, she was, she was very, uh, very, just locked in and then just kind of ran out of gas, I think. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Gemma, she finishes her first Solheim Cup 0-0-2, oh, oh, and two. Um, <laughs> but two important halves, you know? Yeah. Uh, she sat all day Saturday. I have to think she was just itching to get back out there. That was, yeah, TC, it was 13-11 to 11 to the U.S. at this point. <sighs> Lexi was in total control of her match at, in, in the last, and Ali Ewing was... Two up with six to play over Caroline Headwall. No, oh, she she was she was three up. She was three <laughs> up with six to play over Caroline Headwall. Gosh, she must be sick tonight. That's tough, man. That's... And then the impossible happened. Like literally, then like the one of the coolest things in golf I've ever seen. <laughs> so Caroline, birdies thirteen. Like and not just birdies. Like makes. She's making bombs. She's, she's rolling in putts. And not even like fluky putts. They're like 25 footers that it's like that putt is not going anywhere but the bottom of the cup. And, 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 it, and, and the emotion, the excitement just slowly builds. You know, like that first birdie. Okay, you know, fist pump. And then the next whole birdie. Oh, yo, yeah. first, first down. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Move the chain. Move the first. Like, you know, she's getting up. What's she's, that? She's what's that old second and stick? That you guys always reference from like South Carolina oh, versus oh, Kent, like Florida. Hurry or called yeah, like, like a, was, like a was, second quarter drive. It's like, a, you know, like 12 plays. Early season SEC game. And, yeah. and uh, Gary Danielson said, this, this is the best called drive i've ever seen no, in the, I, i've seen in the sec in the last in like 12 the, years yeah. it was very specific it was, it was very tcsque like that's the best drive like I've seen in over and it was like it was like screen pass you know it's like all two feet. a set runs and yeah. then like a tight end wheel route you know uh screen run <laughs> Off tackle run slant, like it was just a well balanced drive, nothing sexy. It, yeah. it, it it was incredible, but but in all, it's like I don't even know what other words to to use to describe this match. It, it just was. And she birdies fourteen, and then they both par fifteen. Fifteen was a bear. Fifteen I mean, was everybody's a bear. long four, I believe, yeah. into the wind. Everybody's hitting tough hole, and this three was back there. right, and everybody was leaving. If they left it short of the hole, which was the smart thing to do, everybody's leaving it short. And everybody's misreading it when they, but you got to kind of bring it off the shelf. I know people, you know, probably don't care, but anyway, it was a fun hole to watch because it was it was difficult. They were bringing it so far off the, the yeah, they were trying there. to bank it off yeah. the the yeah. right side and bring it in, and but then, it wasn't really moving in like they wanted to. So everybody came up disappointed, like oh, that should be. And there's so many bad catch basins on the side of these greens here. So after 15, what is it? Square after 15? So no, Ali, so uh, Allie is. Let's see here. Allie must be still one up after She's 15. one up after 15. And then and like Allie's not making bogeys. He parred 13 through 17. Yeah. Yeah. And and so then Caroline goes birdie's 16. And, and I'll say when when the headwall birdie went in on 16, there were there were the media center erupted. Th things are kind of like <laughs> there were some like European, I'm sure Swedish you know, people in the back. It, it, it Volunteers was, were eating in there too. It wasn't just yeah. media. Like it was, yeah. And like, people were like, this can't possibly happen. Yeah. Right. And then, and then, you know, and, and Sagan is in like in total control. Maya is doing big girl shit yeah. over on her match as well. She's taking control. There's kind of an, like a groundswell there. And then Caroline birdie 17 again, rolling in like a 20 foot birdie putt. It's incredible. It's incredible. And then, and then and the media center yeah. erupting even more. And then like they, you know, one of the few drives they should on 18 all day. Yeah. Like she, she hits 
just a sensational drive, puts it out there. Allie, Allie hit a good drive herself, kind of takes up, uh, bounces in the rough, but bounces it kind of, you know, off the backside of that bunker. Yep. And then, you know, I think she hit one in the in the left greenside bunker. Yeah. Not a bad kind shot in against, there. Like up against that far lip, though, which it looked a little awkward. And, and and then Caroline like swoops this high draw after she stepped off of it. Remember, she stepped yeah. off of that three wood. And then swoops this high draw and hits the front left part of the green and rolls it to what 20, 25 feet. Yeah. And it's like, holy shit, that she's gonna do this. And then and then Ali basically skanks one over the green and and it's like the, 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 that it. was unbelievable. It, it literally, Neil, you'll like so, this. So Ali, Ali kind of gassed it on eighteen. She did, but like, yeah, but it but was he, like, but like she, even if she, she was already one down, she was dead. Like yeah. she, was, she was dead. Like yeah. like like Headwall was not making anything but birdie on that <laughs> hole. Yeah, yeah. It was true force of will. Just like this is happening, and there's nothing you can do about it. You'll like this. I was kind of proud of this tweet. I, I tweeted at, at this exact point. I was like, Headwall right now was like Stanley Goodspeed on the back of yeah. Alcatraz. <laughs> at, just just firing up those green players. Stabbed himself in the heart with the, <laughs> the VX poison. Gas. I mean, seriously, yeah. it's one of the things like who who Antidote. who got was it Willet or like who who basically birdied out to like win the Masters or or Schwartzel? Schwartzel. Schwartzel. One birdied the last it, four. It was I basically like it was like she was she was five under on the or she was she was six under on the last six holes today. On like, and there weren't that many birdies out there. <laughs> she was six under on the last six holes, and she <laughs> sat the first three sessions. It was. I like, know that's that's that is the most. And like anybody that comes at us for like, thing. oh, you guys are being hyperbolic. This, you know, women's golf. This and that. Go watch the highlights. Go watch it. If there are highlights, please don't come back at us if they're not highlights. It's, who knows? If it, like which is how I felt on 15. I was like, oh, I'm never going to get to see this again. <laughs> right. Like, I don't know where the highlights are going to be. <laughs> like, I, I, I just went up no, to the after. I was like, I got to shake your hand. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, my God. <laughs> I got to shake your hand. I want to shake your hand. <laughs> Fuck you. I, I know what you're doing here. Uh, it was awesome. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, Randy and I were ebullient. Yeah, just, it, just. Like, it, that's when you guys started and truly it, the, the media I, you know i've not been a part of that many media centers but by far the biggest reaction inside of a media center that i've ever media slash to. hospitality <laughs> <still. laughs> slash who the hell knows who's getting through that yeah. door Tough uh, luck on your so all right hey, so where are we where it. are we after that we are um uh, we're we're riding high. It's Thirteen we're twelve. Doing. U.S. is still up though. Thirteen and that, twelve. Yeah, and, and yeah. However, however, Maya. At the, so Maya is the next one up. Um, and Maya, you know, this was a hard fought match. Did you guys see her all day? Take like three, whiff three times on fifteen. Yeah, you saw that. Yeah, I mean, it was tough. <laughs> she was like, Wait, I'm out of here. So she hit it up in the bunker to the right of fifteen, like the pot bunker. Yeah. The, the, the f- but it got caught one. in that nasty got caught in the Bermuda, and she just didn't move the ball like three separate swings, and then she was like, "Cool, we're done." <laughs> Let's go. So she next. went. Yeah, it was like, but I was kind of concerned. You were those on fifteen today. <laughs> yeah. At that point, I was like, "Oh, this, this was this was the match." I believe everybody watching saw no. Sh- well, and even us, uh, the world feed did not show this match. Until- I don't think they showed a single shot until a putt on twelve. I was yeah maybe a little but either way it was like this this truly the forgotten match out on the course there was no the there was no blood until until seven Maya took a one up lead on seven and then held that lead until uh until she went two up on thirteen after after Allison bogeyed and Allison was steady she missed a few more putts today than she, yeah, I've been accustomed she, she to seeing her lately cracks, but. It wasn't um, bad golf by any means. Yeah, and then you know Allison Claus went back on 15 with that aforementioned kind of debacle from from Maya, and then after that it's like you know it's back to one up, and then Maya slams the door on 17, and and that well, was really it. slammed it on 16. I mean, she yeah. absolutely she she hit a little too big of a draw over on that left hand side rough. That hit who knows what the distance is because the telecast didn't want to tell us <laughs> clubs or distance in, but. Absolutely flagged it, literally almost dunked it, took one big bounce back, and then spun and had like a, I don't know, 
seven, yeah. eight footer for birdie there. Allison completely like just left it over on the front right side of that green. Gave herself like a good run, but ran it past and Maya just like drained the birdie putt. Maya so kind of reminds me of Max a little bit where like she's got to figure out how to win. She's got to figure out how to get it done under pressure and she's doing that and, and she doesn't really have any big weaknesses. She's just solid with everything and she's positive and pleasant and all that. She's just, you know. I, I thought I, I asked a question in the press conference. I, I asked her if she was a rookie. I wanted to know about Proud her experience you. this week. Uh, and I thought it was cool. I mean, she was like, straight up, this was the best experience of my life. She was like, honestly, like, I'm starstruck around Captain Pedersen, which I thought was was pretty fun. Uh, we talked earlier about, you know, this can be a springboard for certain players. It feels like this could absolutely be a springboard, more of a springboard Hell for yeah. Maya Stark. Yeah, yeah. two I mean, one and one this week. Dude, she has like all the tools too. And I know we've gushed over her in the past because we played with her in the pro mm -hmm. at international crown, but like you're such a homer. Well, I mean, it's hard because number one, you like see her play. It, I kind of has like, you know, we haven't spent a lot of time around Lynn. We've obviously watched her like, you know, rack up tons of victories and like have watched her play on TV a lot. But like when you see when we were playing with with Maya, some of the shots she was hitting, it's not like the same trajectory or speed or anything like that. But her control and command of the ball is like when we played with Ludwig. And well, she was just like, yeah. she's just like, yep, I'm going to hit this here because of the wind. And she like, look at her caddy, who's one of the fucking best out there. <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, sounds good. Like, fucking good. It, 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 it's a credit to the Swedish like national program, which is 100%. the gold standard for every like it's like essentially what the u.s is trying to create right yes. now and, and and i think there's something to be said for that with peter hansen and some of the like the, you know they were rolling deep out there this week and and you know again like ludwig coming in like there's a sense of camaraderie there mm -hmm. and, and there's more from coming they're, they're there's coming. ingrid lindblad ingrid is... there's yeah there's like three or four more in the top yeah 20 in the in the uh world amateur rankings I so mean, she, she went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the u.s open champion and and beat her Super impressive. And I do want to say Allison Corpus, I know this loss will, will absolutely leave a sour taste in her mouth, but a, but a really good first Solheim Cup for her. She was 2-0-1 coming into singles, ends the week 2-1-1. Um, I, I thought she she validated the U.S. Open win. I mean, it, it it she is certainly somebody that deserves to be mentioned among the game's best, and I think we're going to see a ton of her in the next couple of years. <laughs> I, had, I had notes written down for every match. I was just like adding to them as the day went along. My notes for this one were, who the fuck knows, haven't seen a single shot <laughs> after the front nine. <laughs> Damn. It also, uh, genius work by the crowd. I don't know where this came from. Obviously, everybody <laughs> knows I got kids. Uh, baby Shark is like, oh, you know, geez. luckily we're out of the Baby Shark phase. But very popular chant out there this week. And don't sing it. I'll never get today, it out of my head. Don't do it. Don't do it. Do it. Don't do it. Maya Stark. Do it. Do 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 Maya Stark. Do 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 Maya Stark. Now everybody listening is gonna have that suck. <laughs> All right. It's catchy though. So we're thirteen sure. thirteen. We're thirteen thirteen, and now it's this is it. Carlotta Saganda. But we're not thinking necessarily this is it. We're thinking there's two matches left. Right. No, Le what we're thinking is like, oh man, Lexi's match matters. Right? Yeah. Lexi's match all of a sudden really matters. Yeah. But well, I didn't realize how much it mattered. I thought it was, I, I, in my head, it was like, oh, Lexi wins, the US wins. Yeah. I didn't think about the flip side of that, which was like, oh, they're going to tie. <laughs> and they there's a retainer. I forgot about the retainer. Yeah. It's, it's basically what happened, Cody. That's tough. Nelly, That's what happened. Carlota, you were out there on, picked him up on 15. 15 yes. And, uh, it, well, and following along, like on the uh, updates on the score, which are, are very delayed, it was like Nelly's getting the doors blown off on the front nine, which is just, you're like, oh, God, what, what's yeah, going three on? Down after like, eight. I got no clue, but like, that's so disappointing. You know, just that, that's a great God, word. For Nelly, it. just let's just be the kid. Like, Fulfill like your for potential. once rise to the yes. occasion. Like, you're playing second to last you, for a you reason. You don't know how much 
How many majors I have? I, have I need 10 and I need, I need this to be a springboard <laughs> into a lot more majors. Okay. I need it. All right. Daddy uh, needs this. And so it was just, it's just like frustrating to see it, you know, on a leaderboard of like, oh, great. You know? Yeah. And then they come into 15 and Seconda hits this shank. And it was like, well, Nelly, Nelly birdied nine, wins 10 with a par. Gets it to one up and then kind of, you know, and then it's kind of in the balance at one up and then we get to 15. It's yeah. a 15. You know, so she's one down at that point. Or yeah. Yeah. But like, like Nelly's fought back some doubt with Carlotta, but home, home crowd is behind her. Nelly's probably getting and pissed just, at this point because Carlotta's well, playing slow. Yeah. And she shanked it up so into slow. up, up right. And, and, and pretty quickly it was like, oh, she's, you know, she's going to win this hole. She had a, a kind of a tough lie behind the green and made a really nice chip to get up and down. And on the way to 16, it just felt like, oh my God, she just stole every bit of momentum. This is going to be brutal. She's going to beat this, you know, S Spaniard on her home soil to win the yes, Solheim Cup. Exactly. I, 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 at that point, I believed that was what was going to happen. And then when she hit that approach into 16, I believed it even more. Yeah. And then she caught Mongolian. And then Carlotta puts it reversal. inside of her ball I mean, on 16. And so that was just rips her uh, heart out. Of you 17. know, and, it, and, Randy, you know, I know we've talked about it a little bit, but it seems like it's the putting because the ball striking looked the, the putt on 16 was one of the atrocious. worst I've seen. It, it was a little left to right, and that putt started right, and I'm not even sure it got to the hole. It just was kind of a wet fart of a putt. Okay. I mean, I mean, it was really, really bad. And in that situation. Where where you you, you kind of got to assume Carlotta's in for birdie? Yeah, like we got to hit a confident putt there, and she absolutely did not do that. That's concerning. Yeah, she's changed. This is the third putter change so far this year. She was putting with the Newport up until U.S. Women's Open. Then she went to what's the fatter, like the fat Newport? It's like the select, like the, I think the, the two plus or the yeah whatever yeah. that is. Yeah. So she putted with that up until through AIG Women's, and then in the last couple of weeks she went to the new. Uh, it's like the the same putter that you have. Like I don't know which one. Is so, it. The Phantom Seven Seven and a Half. I think. All right. Well, she got like the murdered out one, the new <laughs> Seven Point Two or whatever it is. It looks sick. Um, but yeah, the putting is a huge issue. We've seen it. Like ball striking has been great. She had driver trouble. She went. You know, switch between her stealth and uh, title driver a couple times this year, but like everything around, like on the course, looked pretty decent up until like the putting green, and then it, it just wasn't there. And even like tough shot, tough position to be on 17 after losing 16, giving honors away, and then Carlota actually like hitting probably the shot of the tournament outside of maybe you could say like. Emily's hole in one. Yeah. Maybe yeah. a couple other hole outs, but like the yeah. finding moment, like Carlota absolutely like flagging that. And then Nelly just. I would put of, Angel's like shot into 14 today up there too. Yeah. Of just like the but moment. Nelly, like, needing to yeah. like put herself on the green and like just it leaked a little bit left on her. Um, what think, do you, how are you guys thinking about Nelly right now? Well, you know, people want to know are we adjusting the. We're just the number. Are you ready to, to give an official statement? I'm going to give an official statement, you know, and, and listen, and a long Some career, long -term guidance. Picking, a lot, yeah, we're, making we're, awesome we're, picks. The Beluga, you know, people, the Beluga's overweight. Forward guidance. people have bought houses with the Beluga's picks. Okay. I mean, it's just good, good stuff. How does he do it? A lot of people ask me that. And with five majors and was she 23? She's 24, 24. Mm -hmm. so Hollywood call that old. Yes. I, <laughs> I hold out hope that, that five we'll, majors meaning they play five they play majors. Five majors. Yeah. yeah. She has one currently. She has one currently. I, I, I might have to bring it down from, from 11. <laughs> and I think I'm going to bring it down to, to like realistically like four. Whoa. <laughs> if yeah. we're being honest, because you know why mainly the reason why the like, stock is down 78%. I, no, 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 no. We're just, <laughs> we're, we're, we're we're the refining. It's getting killed. We're refining. We're taking refinancing. it off. You're of, taking We're it off. Canceled trading. No, I'm trying to get some debt turned into equity. You know, I'm trying. I'm trying to do some financial engineering. Maybe you have to take this private. Yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do—a leverage buyout. Anyway, <laughs> Apollo circling. My, I and wish that I don't feel like she, I don't see the. I don't know if she wants to win eleven majors. 
What do is we think fair? of her body language? You you walked Cody with her. Like I'm not saying she, she I, I'm not saying now. she doesn't care, but it's it doesn't seem passion. like that. Maybe she's like a. You think she's a lot softer than you thought she was? Yes, I guess that's what I'm getting at. I yeah. guess I assume that like oh she's got a passion to go like I'm gonna go win every tournament and it and it it, it kind of feels like yeah I don't feel like it right now. Do you know what else like, is like? It's, it's not that she doesn't care. It's like you know, fuck this. I'm not like I'm not yeah. you know I'm done with this for now. I don't. I don't it's like, does she have dog? Which is you know, weird because this is that, that feels a little bit yes. like post yeah. fourth major Rory. This that is supposed to be like, she was in for four or five years. This is supposed to be like her, like uh, like big coming out year. Like she got new fucking equipment deals. She got some uh, a banging new uh, clothing contract. Like she is the face now of Nike Golf. Uh, and I know you guys like, yeah, you guys want to see that dog in her, but like. She doesn't have Roback. We all know Roback. <laughs> These guys just understand quality. There's God, only one way sir, to drive Roback. Thanks, Dolly. Now the fall is here. It's a perfect time to load <laughs> up on the best gear town. we own. First, performance polos just hit differently. Whether it's the USA theme design just in time for these couple weeks of golf or the classic solids and stripes, these polos look clean, four-way stretch, moisture-wicking fabric. These polos are perfect for a warm autumn day on the course. Second, Roback's performance hoodies are the stretchiest, softies hoodies in golf. If you Ooh. want to be comfortable, relax on the course, you wear a Roback hoodie. You guys know we can't take them off. Look at us right now, right? They can't take they're them off. They're so good. They're so good. And if you want to Tamble, start your day right, right, then start your day in a Roback hoodie. Third, performance Q-zips, they're a game changer. Nothing beats a Roback Q-zip for an early round of golf. Soft, stretchy, comfortable. We honestly can't take those off either. So we got a lot of things we're wearing at the same time. Can't take them off. <laughs> if, it fe- if it feels like we can't go anywhere, try me without try buying that off, subtle man. dog logo or like that two-stripe hands, ridge on the back. I'm layered up. Fall is here. I think oh, I think Sarge. Time of the year. I think Sarge just grew up before our very eyes. Sarge, Sarge, <laughs> land the plane. What's the promo code? Use code <laughs> NLU. That's November Lima uniform at Robac. Dot com for a generous 20% off your first order through the end of this week. That's spelled R H O B A C K dot com. 20% off all polos, Q zips, hoodies, and more. The code NLU. Fall golf is here, so make sure you check them out now. Is that what they use in a y- uniform for you? Yeah. I didn't know that. Hmm. How about that? How about that? Guys, no, but uh, yeah. am I wrong? I no with, with Nelly, like. No, I don't want to be unfair. It's not dumb. You know, I don't want to like we, assume. We said our part. We can, we can, we can. Okay. Go. I th- no, I think it's yeah, all yeah. fair. Yeah. But I, I, oh, do I think she can win eleven majors? Do I think she should <laughs> win eleven majors? Yes, I do. With with that swing, it's like why the fuck not? You know. Wait, I don't know. If <laughs> but do I, now, do I think she's going to? No, I don't. All right, I don't. There, are you happy? So, is are we officially on four? Is that the over under? No, we're officially off eleven. I'm not ready to declare a new number. <laughs> Wow, a lot I, of clarity from uh, these are forward-looking statements. We haven't gotten a valuation yet, okay? We're going to have to reevaluate. This is very Columbia. Just fired a yeah. CFO. Uh, let, me, let me just bottom line again. We I, we touched on it last night. Uh, Carlotta Saganda, first Solheim ever on Spanish soil. She's 33 years old. Uh, she hasn't won, I don't think, on the LPGA Tour in like six years. A number of good major finishes. Th- this quite literally was the biggest weekend of her career and she came out and went four no and not only that with the king there with, with the, the pal there with the king there flagged approach shots on 16 and 17 and made the putt that retained the cup for europe i mean th- this is fairy tale shit it was mm-hmm. really cool to see amen no no literally no more needs to be said yeah. that's it tc with the so the, we, we that's finished. when the commotion happened oh yeah that's when you know the the people are just Storming running the through green, the bunkers. You know what have they done here? They just let them on the course. It's fourteen yeah. thirteen. We've we've retained the cup. We've essentially won the cup. And I say, as you put it on, you Twitter, did not win. We, we had it. We, it's not a win. Stop saying that. It's no, not a you victory. said it. You said. Yeah, it. you said it earlier. You said it. At the top <laughs> of the podcast. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. Was I thinking about? You, uh, I, I don't know. You, you said need to check yourself. Won. No, I was actually. And then you said the U.S. lost after that, just for good measure. And I was like, lose. <laughs> Europe did not win. Okay. 
Okay. One but team was celebrating after the round. One <laughs> one team looked dejected. <laughs> okay. You said the winners press conference, and we were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah like yeah. they did win. Only one team had their whole team there at the presser. I was gonna Very say true. TC though. You said we we still had a nice dessert out on the course. Yeah. Could you walk us through? Yeah. I mean, all the, right. The creamy boys. <laughs> so obviously we talked about all the Lexi stuff last night. I don't think we need to rehash it. You know, even though we were completely at the media at large, the media completely out of line for 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 asking Lexi about a muffed chip or the, shank chip or whatever. The corrupt. Um, media. So so Lexi goes down, you know, big spot for her. A lot of things flying. I tend to think that they, they were talking about this shit in the team room, even of oh, like, yeah, you know yeah, what, like, like, go get him, Lexi, go, go show the world what you're all about. I'm going to send you out last. Da, 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 da. We were astonished at that. Lexi goes out and Emily, Peter, Emily Pedersen, birdies one, goes one up. They both part two. And, and then Lexi makes bogey on three. She goes two down early, She's two down through four holes. They both, uh, birdie four and then Lexi comes right back and birdies five six eight and then wins nine with a bogey Emily <laughs> whoa yikes <laughs> and so flips it from two up or from, from two down to two up by the time she makes the turn and from that and that was that was a defining moment Lexi could have folded up you know like and, and that's the thing too everybody's like oh Lexi like you know taste it TC it's like Never like it's never been about like Lexi's one of the best golfers in the world. Yes, she's like inc like even more so because she she has these flaws of the putter and the chipping and all that. Like she's T to Green, she's unequivocally one of the best like female golfers of all time. And it's all this other stuff what, plus uh, all this results wise. No, no, like, as far as just skill, like but like ball, skill you know, and ball, like ball striking. striking. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's it's unbelievable. It's kind of like DJ esque, like you know, <laughs> like right. she's one of the greatest of all time, even though she's only you know, yeah. and and so yeah. it, it's I don't know, it just kills me though that like she gets to four up through thirteen, and then you're thinking, all right, is she gonna slam the door here, or is this thing gonna get interesting? And then Emily birdies fourteen, and, and especially is it gonna get interesting now that like she needs this match, yeah, to at least salvage a tie, right? And and then, you know, Emily birdies 14. And then Lexi bogeys 15. Hit a really poor second shot into 15. I believe that's when she missed, like, the five-footer. Yeah, she, like, really not a good putt. And it, hit a pretty good, like, a bunker shot that probably was ended up better than it was, than, like, than, than the, than the shit, strike. Is this, this going to happen? I'm not sure what happened on 16. I don't even think they showed it because all this stuff was happening. There's oh, the alarm. Boy. We're All the stuff whoa. was Behind happening. Whoa, sorry. Uh, everything's happened with Carlotta up ahead. Then they have to wait on 17. Uh, Lexi. She dumps it in the front bunker. Dumps it in the bunker. Pretty mediocre bunker shot. And then makes the putt. 12, 14 foot It putt. was a big putt. She made the putt. Emily, I thought she, I thought Emily jarred the birdie putt that she had to kind of take it. I, I wanted to see this thing get to 18. Like a big part of me wanted to see it get to 18 and to see, all right, this is this is the litmus test on her entire career. Like if she yeah. gasses this away and Emily Peterson gets a have out of this, like Lexi's career might legitimately be over. And then on the flip side, I'm like, no, like that's like you don't want to like wish that upon anyone. So we didn't we didn't see it. She wins two up. Good on her. She had a great week and awesome week. Can, can I just say though, I think it's I think it's bullshit. You know, the, the U.S. press conference was Stacy. It was Megan Kang, who was the leading U.S. point getter, three and a half points. It was Danielle Kang, who's a leader of the team, went two and two this week. And it should be Lexi Thompson. She went three and one, but it's not. And we all know why it's not. Yeah. Instead, Lilia Vu comes in. And it's not Nelly either. And it's not Nelly either. And, I, and I, I want to make a comment on that, too. As a fan, as a U.S. fan watching this, looking at the leaderboard all day, being you know not being able to see what's going on it's so discouraging to see those two going out last almost as a statement of like okay these are our two horses in the back and they're both down like early you know what i mean and and it's like on paper and through every symbolic way you can they're they are set up to be the the you know maverick and goose of this team 
And then when it comes down to like, well, no, you actually have to do like leadership things. They're just not like not available. Not it's just it's hard. It's hard. You know, it's busy playing the victim in the meantime. Yeah, it's a little. It's just a little bit disappointing, I guess. But all that's a lot bit disappointing. Like Lexi did go three and one. Yeah. Which is awesome. And we're sitting here talking really well about she, des- she deserves a ton being of disappointed in her after going three and one because of the ancillary stuff. No, yeah. yeah. And, and let me be unequivocal. Her play and, and TC, I think that's you never will been join an issue. Me. Yeah. You, you and I flat question whether she should even be on this team. Yeah. Like if it were and my she, team, I would have maybe found a way to like not have her on the team. And she put that shit to bed. And she put that shit to bed. She showed up and she showed out. And and yet, and yet we have this taste in our mouth. And and that is what is just oh my god, it's so frustrating. Yeah. So let's let's wrap this segment. Uh most valuable player, least valuable player. Uh Neil, who you got? Who who's your MVP? You can give me one for either side. I'd say Carlota. Yeah. I, I mean it has to be. I was right? gonna say I don't yeah. think I mean that was any, an easy one. Do, right? do we have a quarter? Well, no, but I was thinking yeah. about like saying a US player, but like you know, I'd say of the entire event, it's an easy answer. On the U.S. side, I would say Megan Kang. Yeah, yeah. I think that's probably an obvious one, and, and kind of understated. Like, I think I think MVP. I think there's two. I think there's two words. Just like just like the NFL, you've got MVP and most or, outstanding it's like offensive player. Or whatever. Carlotta was like most outstanding offensive player, or like you know, like offensive player the of the owner? year. No, Caroline Headwall. <laughs> Headwall. Yeah. I mean, that was it, man. Yeah, well, she, was like was the, she was like the finals MVP. She was the finals right. MVP. Or like, that, the, that, or like yeah. the sixth man of the year or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Uh, well, then I'm more curious than about least valuable players. I mean, I, I got to put Celine. For me, it's yeah, Celine. Celine. Uh, you know, but, but ultimately, it's Celine, just be obviously, she didn't get a point here, but I'm going to go with Rose. I was going to say Rose myself. Yeah. I was going to say Madeline was probably in the conversation. Uh, she did. Would she go one, one, and one? Yeah, that's a tough one. But but like, so so yeah. I guess not record wise, no. But it's it's obvious it's Celine on the European side for several reasons. Didn't play a lot of matches. Was came in with high expectations and just just didn't didn't win anything. And then like and then allegedly like tanked some of the strategy. Yeah, too very alleged. Yeah, I I, th- I think had you told me beginning of the week that. Celine and Charlie were going to combine to go one and five. I'm like, oh my god, the U.S. is going to just wax. Other than Rose, I'd, I'd have to put Cub Show in the conversation, just for being a bit of the you know just invisible kind of. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think Ali Ewing. I mean, it's tough, but when you're three up with six to play and you can't get it done to win the cup, that's. I'm sorry, but you probably belong in the conversation. I know, I know, Edwall went and got it, but you know, let's yeah. let's close the door. Uh, what about captains? I think it was it was just the Grant. Like Randy, you had a great tweet. I think on Friday of after Pedersen and um, Stacy Lewis had had two very distinctly opposite quotes about strategy and analysis versus. Hey, like I, you know, I, I'm gonna trust my instincts, and I want dogs, basically. And I think it's kind of fitting that it was it was a tie with a you know a win on the European side. Um, but also, like, it's super interesting that we have like we get to go back next year and run this all back with the exact same captains in a very condensed way, like 12 months from now, on you know in the U.S. with probably more depth on both sides. With some of this young talent coming up, I think it's it's one of the most interesting team golf turnarounds in recent memory. It's never, you know, it's always been. I think if if it's if it's off cycle, it's always been three years instead of one year. This is the first time I think I can ever recall that it's one year, and we'll see what happens. We'll see what they do differently, if they do anything differently, or if they just, you know, kind of dig deeper and and run it back. What's your post mortem? Either way, Stacy, Suzanne. Well, it made it. It boiled it down to Neil and I joked, but but human versus machine, right? I mean, that's kind of the the two sides. That I think they that's a great way to, to go put down. It. Um, and I think you can like. 
it's very hard because Stacy again was like, I have a lot of rookies on this team. Like your rookies that are on this team are like supposed to be like best in the world. Two major winners and Rose are three of the five. And I don't think that like I understand that this is a completely different event and it takes time because a lot of them like Rose doesn't really know all these people or anything, but like Rose stunk. Right. Like that was a huge disappointment. I don't think like the numbers wise are going to show that like, you know, I think that's where data kind of doesn't get you. Whereas Suzanne not only went with like the eye test, but like the heart test. Right. She had people who she's talked to all of these players for, you know, the past two years and gotten to know like all the young ones, all the veterans that she already knew and like all the ones in between. And she's like, yeah, we've had these conversations like, hey, who do you want to play with? Who who do you think fits? And like, if they said, yeah, like Maya and Lynn, they they wanted to play together. They're like, we're gonna be really good in this format. And we also like, we're fucking jacked and we want the ball. And she trusted them. It's crazy that yeah. we're sitting here right now with Europe retaining the cup the way that we started Friday with. It was a clean sweep in session one. Something that in a, a, a format the United States stinks at. First time they've ever I, won I foursomes. Think, in I think that goes Solheim into history. maybe why it feels more like a win for for team sure. Right? Oh no, it's a big disappointment yeah. after day one. Not only that, but like we talked about the fact that every single player on the U.S. side at least sat a session. You had three players on Team Europe. They were like, "No, like we're you're gonna ride. I'm gonna ride the players that are hot." And dude, we think that Emily was gonna be one of them. Hell no, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Emily had that. a great a great quote. Randy asked a question, another question in the presser. Was, he was peacocking. Oh God, was just... He actually asked a two-parter there, which was bad for him. Mickelson would have been livid. But it was essentially, Emily, are you tired? And she's like, before Emily could even answer, Suzanne goes, no, she's not tired. She can play tomorrow. <laughs> and, and I asked her, you know, what, what was, you know, what was it about? You obviously took an ass kicking in foursomes day one. Like, what helped you kind of flip it around? She played excellent day two. She's like, honestly, like, Suzanne, she knows me. She just has to give me a nod. And I think Emily's words were like, I, I just knew I had to, like, get my ass going. Yeah. I mean, she is the next. Like, she she is Suzanne Pedersen. They come yes. from the same country. Yes. They, no, they, they don't come from the same well, country. Well, same region. <laughs> same region. Excuse me. Thank <laughs> you for the correction. I'll be like this. But, um, and you've talked about it a lot. Like, she is, like, a, a mentee of Suzanne, mm -hmm. you know, she looks up to her. She seeks out her guidance. I think at one point in time, like when Suzanne retired, like Emily's next caddy went and, uh, and worked for Emily, you know, it's, yeah. it's kind of a cool relationship that they have, but to have that trust in a captain's pick where we saw on the other side where we all question, like, where's Carol right now? Why isn't she playing? Well, she just runs on like that premium octane fuel. And that's <laughs> expensive. she might be a Lambo. So you got to fucking like <laughs> save it up. Yeah, the only driver on Sunday. <laughs> not, 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 not a lot of miles to the gallon. But it worked. I think that the, you know, tales of his time, or at least in Hollywood, thirty years, you know, man versus machine. I I kind of liken it to when Gary Kasparov played Watson in yeah. chess. That's a, and yeah. and battled him to a stalemate. <laughs> I do think the machines are coming though. Like I, I, the, yeah, the no. humans have fought them off for now, but then I Google comes out with the supercomputer I, and I, they play the, the Chinese Go game and it, and, and I do think it win. feels like we got to celebrate these wins. Yeah, while we I know. Can. <laughs> that's I, why we, that's why we're celebrating. And I appreciate exactly. though on both sides. I appreciate that both captains stuck to their process. And they stuck to their in. strategy. Like I appreciate that. You know, the U.S. was like, no, we're going to stick with our 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 strategy and it didn't technically work out in the press conference they were really trying to sell us on Ugh. this isn't a loss we're, we're excited we had fun like, man why do y'all look depressed we, as we fuck? won because we had fun that was yeah i didn't like that randy saying, was vomiting but, in the corner but, they were saying um that. you know i think there was a lot i think that as we said yesterday i think that europe won this there are definitely some things you could point to with the u.s where they they you know, they could have slammed the door and they didn't, but uh, Europe came back and got it and they deserve credit for winning. I think other that, people who yeah. deserve credit here and for retaining, on, excuse me, they're on the losing side of this whole thing. But I think it's like really fucking cool that Justin Ray, Jay Ray, we all, you know, see him on Twitter and him putting out incredible stats and everything like that. But like the fact that it's like somebody who's like, you know, kind of homegrown and come up with 
us and like the the Twitter ages and everything else is like now such an integral part of a competition like this and that you have a captain who does rely on him and his team implicitly trusts him. Yes. Yeah. And has so yeah. much trust in the process and the information that he is providing yeah. for her to make the best picks that she possibly can is, I think it's so fucking cool. And it's not taking anything away from Ryder cup or those guys or anything, but like those guys are all like data scientists that come from like who yeah. fucking knows what industry we know. And they, they have, they have access to shot link. 52 so weeks data. a year right so much data and like justin is literally like gathering all this shit himself not only gathering it all himself figuring out like what the it's very entrepreneurial or very like dig it out of the dirt and figure out hey how do we like how do we build something from scratch when we have very incomplete inputs and all that and a lot of the things that we questioned early in the week like they've found a way to make that stuff still very valuable even though the data is probably noisier than they would like and yeah i think i think justin I, and that takes creativity it takes entrepreneurialism it takes self-belief and like it's it, and he's just a he's like the kind of guy you want to root for he's just a great dude yeah. like i light up every time i see him yeah and not uh, him obviously the the most known but like he does have a team yeah. around him helping and, and congrats to all those guys like i understand they're bummed because they're an absolute integral part of this United States team. But and, know, and there's a lot to and there's a lot to be there is a lot to be happy with. They they I think the US found some pairings they can count on next year. Yeah. There's gonna be I, I don't think the US team changes all that much in in you know 12 months, 11 and a half months, whatever it is. So whereas I, I maybe the European team does. The European team right could turn over. So yeah. I, I feel like the US probably has a better foundation in some ways. Um, it, especially with the data, the yeah. machine's going to keep learning. It's, I it's, would like to see Suzanne maybe sprinkle in a little bit of data. <laughs> well, I believe she, that she did. So I know she's uh, tied with Caroline Headwall and her coach. And her, okay. her Caroline's coach is like one of the big data guys for the LET. And I don't know how he gets that, but she relied a little bit on him, but did not want to, didn't put out that yeah. like, they didn't have data analysts or statisticians or she probably else undersold helping them yeah, yeah very much and i think she was like i think there's a lot that she undersold because she didn't want to give like her she's process away. i was she's, gonna say she's and I like think the alpha that can get yes. away with that yeah. like obviously she like put out there like well we have a nutritionalist and we're like well compared to like the stats like team like well fucking work man made sure that like all these players are yeah. fucking highly yeah they were, what, uh, they were pumping them full of think of course yeah, and that's what i was trying to say last <laughs> telling you it's like the clear it's like a there could be a balco scandal no i i yeah so i think suzanne is he's a fascinating knows, character she strikes me as somebody who knows exactly what she's doing and saying all the time she, and she seems those like, types of people yeah. are just like you just can never quite feel comfortable around them. And I think she likes it that way. And I sure. think it'll be really interesting. I think the interplay between her and Lynn, the next one, like, I think she's going to probably like, she might play some mind games. Exactly. And I think, I think Lynn, I think this is going to, Lynn's going to stew on, on yeah, that first match. Sure. And like, if I'm the U S team, I'm <laughs> fucking terrified to play Lynn Grant. <laughs> In Washington D.C. next September, because I think I think Lynn, with another year of seasoning on the LPGA tour and getting more comfortable over in the states and just refining her game a little bit more, working on that putter, I think I think Lynn goes at least it gets at least four points next year. I love it, DZ. Biggie, I know you want I to go to like at least seventeen stuff. points. I, I want. I know you want to go to future yeah, stuff. But real quick, uh, I want to know what's your what's your shot of this tournament. I, well, I think it's impossible to separate Carlotta's approaches on 16 and 17. Okay. T? I would, I would go with that. I, like, that's probably the, the kind of obvious, like that or, or Emily's hole in one. Um, I, I would say it's head wall, man. Like, yeah. I really, and it's tough to deduce it down to one specific shot, but, um, you said Angel Yin too. Yeah, or like Angel on fourteen, like, but but that but that doesn't feel defining because it doesn't feel like the U.S. defined this right this yeah. set of matches, right? Point. Neil? Neil, well, I would say if we're gonna say Carlotta's shot, I have to include the shank in there. 
Those three go together <laughs> for me. Do you know what the funny thing about the shake was? What? Well, it was made with a Titleist. And this is brought to you by <laughs> Titleist, the number one ball in golf, and the overwhelming choice three of players three. You got this week at the Solheim Cup with 18 of the 24 players gaming a Pro V1 or Pro V1X. All right. We talked about highlights. Carlotta, um, you know, you talked about this, the shank. I think absolutely like the stones on home soil to, to absolutely step up and hit a clutch shot when she absolutely needed her tee shot on 17. That's and then to, cool. to drain the putt. Like that's what I'm going to remember. And, and this is a memory that she'll forever remember. We know how much team events mean to the Spaniards, but man, that was so damn cool to do it in front of the King, man. <laughs> yeah. For Nuts. King and country. There's, I don't know. Do they have like the Dame thing in Spain or like what's know. the equivalent, but she should get it. <laughs> Neil, you know, I don't know. Well, we'll, we'll look, we'll, we'll get back. Yeah, yeah. We'll, but, <laughs> there's a reason that more of the best players in the world choose Titleist. Head over to Titleist.com to start the golf ball fitting process and see which golf ball model is best for you and your game. I'm which, an X. Question. Question. X. I'm right. I'm a V. V. Uh, question. We didn't hear a peep this week about who's... We were talking about this earlier. You yeah. raised this earlier when we were walking around on the course today, Cody. Didn't hear a peep about whose golf ball they were playing. Yeah, Maybe true. that's... Meaning, like, when, when we're looking at... Uh, pairings. Foursomes, uh, yeah. Foursomes, you know, we got a couple players out there that, that play different brands, everything else like that. Nobody ever... And maybe that's that. because there's more... Titleist, and maybe it's because there's lower swing speeds. Maybe it's and there's it's not like that robust, like journalists and people are out there who are actually checking bags to make, like, oh, what did you change equipment wise and shit like that. I think that's definitely a, like, a part of it I as think well. That's one thing that I noticed difference. The biggest difference. How dare? How dare the media do that though? Well, this is the biggest right? thing. I, I we see this at like all, all the LPGA events that we go to, but like, um, I was impressed with the United States media that was here for this Solheim cup, it was more than we're over for the IG women's open. Obviously I think this is easier because on every single end. one of them that are here are just jumping over to Rome next week. Not every one of them, but most of them. Yeah. The yeah. four of us aren't. <laughs> no, but not us. That's what I mean. <laughs> well, yeah, not us. We're sending a different team, but I think that's why you see the investment there. Sure. Um, Man, there's so much stuff that's left that like you were talking about golf ball discussions uh like in-depth like playing discussions because you know at the Ryder cup you know the, the players are still talking to people there's still normal scrums and and chit chat during practice rounds and everything else like that it seemed like these players outside of like established press conferences were like pretty much yeah I, that's that's really true it, it, it felt very I don't Watch know. Like, I didn't was, see them off the golf course. I don't know if this was a here thing because of this resort and like just the fact that like us even media couldn't even get into fucking places. Um, but it it felt like yeah. we were missing out on a lot of the potential storylines or explanations to really you know provide people a, a, a why to a lot. There of wasn't places. a lot of. There was a very tight driving range, so there was no opportunity for media to like really hang out there. There's just literally no space on it. And then there was no nowhere where the players were passing other than like a massive amount of fans. A lot of times you go to a tournament and there's like when the yeah. when you get behind the fans stop, there's almost like uh, where the players pass the media, like almost casually in certain spots. And there wasn't any of that because the media center was half a mile away from the driving range and the hotel. So they, were, they weren't coming and going from the same exit or anything like that. I think... Um... Cody, I think I'm going to change my my shot of the tournament. And, How to do and, another ad read? Are no, we well, still in the ad read? I no, think it's. Okay. I think it's. <laughs> I, I think this was with, with a Titleist as well. But I go back to the end of Saturday foursomes. Maya and Lynn. Maya makes that putt on 17. Yep. To to win that match, give them some momentum going into the afternoon when shit was starting to look. We'll give Lynn momentum. Pretty my staff for some reason. Yeah, at the time, but I was but like, what the but hell? like to give the team some hope and some yeah. momentum, and I think that really catalyzed. Like, hey, we are still in this thing. Oh yeah, that. that thing's been down yeah. for a while. <laughs> I wouldn't even worry yeah, about it. We were, uh, yeah. Well, that uh, kind of that lead up discussion, I think, is a good segue to Amsterdam. Oh, Neil, well, I, well, think, I was I, honestly, I didn't get to say other than I did say the shank, but I would say that uh, Leona's chipping. Yeah, 
Got what, that's a great yeah, one. set in mode. That's, that was a, there's a bit of a butterfly that effect off of that the, chip in. You know, the butterfly flaps yes. its wings and, and Europe lot, retains a cup. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Lexi might go to Saudi. <laughs> and you, uh, how, how much time? Because we, we got to keep Amsterdam tight, but uh, we got a lot to cover. I can be so it's fucking tactical, Randy. I know. Uh, I think 12 let's, minutes? Okay. Can real, we get through yes. everything in 12 minutes? I think 12 to 15. All right. TC, cook away. I this think, is the next 12 minutes. We're gonna fucking lay into some. I okay. think we go. I'm gonna back start it. To, I'm gonna use the restroom and you go, TC. I think we go okay. back to the European, the, the ladies' European tour. The venue selection for this, uh, it, it, this never should have been a venue. I don't think it, it's this event is predicated upon, you know, kind of compact, fan friendly stuff, relatively easy to get to. This thing's on a ridge line. It's it's a not a great it was golf course. Always going to present logistical nightmares from the from second the start. they chose it. And then on top of that, they went with this company, uh, Deporte and Business, that like r- basically runs like the Spanish ladies mini tour events. For context, this is kind of who they farm it out to put on the event, build out the infrastructure, yada yada. We had heard Staff IMG it, yeah. had done this. For the last European Solheim in Cup. Scotland, yeah, and now they are out, and this DMB is because it's it's up to the on the on the ladies European side, it's up to the National Golf Federation or Union to put to put it on or whatever. So it seems like they, you know, and and I want to preface this by saying the Spaniards were great this week. Like as far as like the warm people, hospitality, awesome. people were wonderful. They were welcoming. They were accommodative. It was great, but like in true Spanish, <laughs> true kind of Spanish, and I'm probably looking ahead to Italy next week. They're not the most organized, like, like it, it was not a very organized it's a bit event. Fair. Yeah, and it was. It's respect. like, hey, like we're gonna take our time with stuff, and that's just like that's so. Some of that's the culture, you know, and 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 I know that's like a stereotype, but I think sometimes stereotypes are pretty well worn and, and accurate. Um, but, but they they, they, never they put hired on an this event of this scale. Yeah, they do like a lower level ladies European tour event and you know some other stuff. And it's like from the get go, it was you know the the transportation situation, the logistics in and out, the you know no water on the course for anybody. There's no bathrooms out there. They, they, they heard they're running out of food and, and yeah. well, there's only one entry point into the entire one entry you know, point. So the the yeah. queue is ridiculous. This morning. Thank goodness we got around that because there was, I mean, what, 10, 12 buses yeah. parked there that still had people on them. They it was letting people off the bus because the line was so long already. It was, you know, in like the, um, I don't know, it just, I mean, you name it, it, it was, it kind of went wrong this week and, and, and they fought through it like grant and like, you know, even like the cops, I mean, they were like, there were, there were, they had 12 inside ropes things when there's normally a couple hundred yeah. people Jeez. all over the course We're at nine all minutes. that stuff then on top of it they they're in charge of the broadcast the world feed especially as well you want me to get and they bring this? in yeah I, bring I, yeah get I, into I, this so i'm gonna go through this very quickly uh prior years a group called the european tour productions has produced the images that then gets through media rights, get sold to the skies, the NBCs, et cetera. And they go out on a raw feed to the different For whatever studios. reason, uh, European, I mean, when I say forever reason. They're skimping on money. has to be money. Yeah. Uh, a group called UCOM is brought in to produce all the images that can get to be distributed to the skies, the NBCs, et cetera. Uh, apparently, UCOM, again, much like everything, just is not like the premium gold standard in this. Not a ton of experience doing like Solheim or Ryder Cup. And so Sky, NBC, they are receiving these images that just aren't up to what they're used to, I think, on a week to week basis. And one thing I would add to that, if I after three days of of watching, not a lot of hard cameras. I think they had a strategy of like, we're going to move guys around with tripods. Each group had a camera guy working his ass off. I wouldn't say each group. I said like the first couple days, each group. No, no, no. Singles, each group didn't have. 
every group that came through 15 had a cameraman with them. Maybe, maybe by the time they got to 15. Maybe. But so yeah. w- regardless, I think that what they didn't anticipate was how hard it was going to get those camera guys from hole to hole because of how far away the holes were and the choke points with fans. So they were really struggling to keep those guys. They were hustling, man. But it's just like, that's just bad logistics. It's bad planning. Well, and so what happens is uh, when a world feed is then provided to NBC, I'll I'll talk specifically about NBC, um, it's not as good as a normal broadcast. And then NBC peppers that broadcast with their standard heavy, heavy commercial payload. And it just, I mean, it got to the point where Tom Abbott was literally calling out UCOM, which is something I've never heard a commentator say about the the feed that they are getting. Um, I can't tell you how many people in my mentions just saying the coverage sucks. And and I do want to make a very salient point here. It, It is such a shame because an event like the Solheim Cup, we spend so much time hyping the women's game. It is Every it it is so deserving of eyeballs. It it is awesome, and when you bring new fans and you get them to tune into a product, there's limited opportunities to do that. Exactly, and when you got to make the most out of it, when they have a a terrible experience with the broadcast, they're simply not going to invest. And chances are, they're not going to come back if ever, or not for a while. And it's just truly a shame. And if golf is serious about growing the women's game then whomever the powers that be, and and again, just figure it the fuck out, but they got to get better. It's so maddening. I I think also they're, they're, you know, it affected downstream, affected the graphics. It affected, I'm sure there was some sort of carve out with Costa del Sol and Andalusia and uh, the, the Pinky Courtesan Resort itself to, you know, show pictures of the clubhouse and a certain amount of drone shots and all that it stuff. Too. A, a few different angles of the clubhouse. Like, it, like <laughs> it was the same. You know, it was. It was. It was. In, it got to the point where it was so egregious and insulting that, like, like I, I would have turned it off if I wasn't here and just listened yeah, to the radio it, or whatever. Like, but be, being a fan of, we say it about golf in general sometimes, but certainly like the women's game, I, I think it's amplified. It, it shouldn't be hard and frustrating to try to be a fan of something. Like if, if I turn on a broadcast, it should be a pleasant experience. And it just simply time and time again is not. And it and it pisses me off. It pisses me off. Randy, beyond that, I I think I don't think golf channels' hands are clue are are clean here either. They they sent two on course reporters, which uh, is uh three. Three? K, Karen, and John Wood. Was Karen on John the course? Woods came in today. I think yeah. it was Sky. I think he came in with really? Sky. He was I think there were two him. out there. We couldn't get any. The graphics were shit, which normally they can lay in the graphics on you know on the back end. They, like no yardages, no context well, whatsoever. Part of, that too, part of that too is a so that that digs into the a deeper issue of a UCOM and everything else like that. Because yeah. what does that mean? How do we get? I know everybody's club, scrambling. You need, totally, you need more volunteers for spot. You couldn't even get spotters. scoreboards up. Exactly. I think overall, we we've harped on this graphics is it's just shit, right? But and to yeah. take like them missing this opportunity and why I think this is so poignant here this time is because it's perfect viewing audience for fucking people in the United States. Yeah, there was pre NFL today. Was not yeah. on yet. There's nothing for people to watch in the morning except for to wake up, make you know, make a pot of coffee and watch some really good, exciting golf. I was gonna say, and the golf was fabulous all weekend. I mean, it was it was not great golf on Friday, and then Saturday, Sunday was standout. It was awesome. It was everything you want a golf tournament to be. And I go back to the venue selection because I think that's. Very indicative. A, the last time they had this in Europe was 20, 2019. I think the event's grown since then, both stature, importance, standing in the game, you know, kind of, hey, we're going to put some more weight behind this, more fans, blown away by the fans that came in from all over the it place. It was awesome. And awesome fans. It was, it, but it's, it's so indicative of like, hey, you know what? We're going to take this check from this resort instead of focusing on selling t- selling as many tickets as we can and making the fan experience great and growing this, this for the long term fans here and watching on television. and i'll tell you what pisses me off the most is you look at like like there's 
there's so many experienced people who are in meetings who know have a feeling of how something is going to go like Martin slumbers, Keith Pelly, um, you know, like they're on the board at the ladies European tour. They have an inkling of how this is going to go. They know, right. Yeah, and, absolutely. and they're like, your hands aren't clean either. Like everybody needs to do fucking better. And this is a great preview of what we're going to see next, next week. As far as the commercial load for the Ryder cup, it's going to be a disgrace again. It's just like well, I don't know about that because you know it's men, so I'm sure they'll bring in uh, a Rolex, the proud partner, which also, by the way, is a proud partner here. But and uh, KPMG, KPMG yeah. came through, right? Because I sure wasn't getting, getting any any interrupted coverage without them. Right, right. I mean, yeah. It, Sh it, shout well, out to. Them. I would just add one more thing. Just generally, the the uh, broadcasting needs to get better at this type of event. Yeah. I need to figure out a NFL red zone. Yes. Give me a four box. Like we, if we Octo can do it in box. football yeah. and, and pipe in, like have announcers announcing individual groups and just bring them up at, at mid conversation. It, Sunday like, singles is like one of the or, best or, things or, in sports. Or at least get the leaderboard live Again. updating it. We don't, you don't need to surprise me. I just want to know the information when it happened. And end of the day, how much have we heard about, companies golf channel all the all the big players you know we we have to elevate the women's game we we you know grow the game we we got to do this and this and, and when the rubber meets the road it, it's simply it, it's not being done or it's it's not being done well enough it, it's infuriating you got, you got it's, one minute and it leads me to believe it's it's lip service most of the time yeah. and, and that sucks and it's i mean it's something like pga tour radio cut like they they cut away from it <laughs> earlier this week with nine holes to go to run a uh, retrospective yeah. on al uh, guyberger's 59 it's just insane. people forget how impressive that was though. They, they, they needed to remind they, them they didn't they didn't air any like any of the post stuff today and it just i get back to i like i i personally i think the ladies european tour ceo or commissioner should lose her job i think i think there's several people that they're operations person or chief commercial like there needs to be accountability for this and i know that they've got img coming in to do i think the netherlands will be great yeah. but at some point like what they put out on several fronts this week was a hundred percent unacceptable and like there needs to be accountability and responsibility ah. for that. i don't i don't think i i got my fair share in here my our friends at the bbc reached out to the uh organizing fucking company and asked them said hey deportes and business I'm, I'm her i'm sure you're aware of the Prestige issues robot. we would like a uh, comment from you and they said more specifically um the water situation they said was taking care of a uh, majority of the logistical concerns the players didn't even have water um they said yes they ran out of food on thursday afternoon but we fixed friday. that and yeah. friday afternoon and uh, we fixed that by Saturday, which is bullshit. Um, they ran out yesterday. Unfortunately, too. that's not true because they were out of water again today and uh, yesterday afternoon, as well as uh, today, they also ran out of food. And and by food, we're not talking about like a normal uh, American or even some of the European events that I've gone to, where it's like food trucks and hot dogs and hamburgers, like shit that takes time to like cook. Like these are, uh, I would say, like traditional sandwiches. That, that everyone eats in Spain, right? It's just like yeah. a baguette with some ham that and, you could pre make and cheese on it. 20,000 of them. Exactly. Uh, it ran out of that. You, The water situation we talked about, no refillable water stands anywhere. You couldn't even Which bring horrible. your own water when, bottle. When in. you don't let people bring their own shit in and then, you, and, and then there's nowhere to buy it, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. The reason why there, again, money grab, because one of the sponsors of this event is a water company, and the only water that they wanted <laughs> around this place was in their water bottles that they wanted people to pay for. Which I hope um, they're recycling. They're all fucking plastic. Part right? of this yeah. is, yes, uh, this area is Costa del Sol and everything on the ladies' European side. Their their race, their FedEx Cup, their their CME Globe uh, race to the M CM, uh, CME is called the race to the Casa del Sol, which um, that's the, the final season ending event on the ladies European tour is going to be held a little bit uh, further east of where we're at right now in November or December. But the part of, and it sounds getting, like they may parachute out <laughs> yeah. part of them getting this Solheim cup over a, a separate location, very good location 
uh, in mainland Europe, or excuse me, in in England that Laura Davies was riding for. That yeah. the Dame wanted and, yeah. and, thought and put together a group for everything yeah. lined up for Heathland golf course did not happen because of this kind of sweetheart deal by Casa del Sol. They came in and said, "Hey, if we invest this amount of money in this many years uh, to to do the season ending thing, will we be gifted uh, in a uh, Solheim Cup?" And ultimately, they said yes. And part of that is they brought in the Federation. The Federation was very, very specific that they wanted all this stuff to be Spanish businesses that are running it, Spanish organizations. Which these which these, these companies shouldn't even – like I don't even blame these companies because they shouldn't have even been allowed to bid on it and, and I don't or even, run it in the I first place. I don't even mind the theory of like let's use Spanish businesses, but you got to make sure they're up to the task. Yeah. Right. This is very, very different. I talked to a couple of LET players, and this company also runs uh, – I think they have two LET events in Spain during the year. They have one earlier in the spring, and then they have the season-ending one. This company runs on both. They have the same fucking issues there too. They're never prepared – for some reason, they're always caught with their pants down, overwhelmed about Which, everything. Again, that's a there's that's a ladies' any, European tour issue. There's right? never any answers. So I did some more digging. All right, I said, "Hey, what's going on with this?" Then they said, "Oh, the only reason why we're here is because they signed this deal for the the race to the Costa del Sol on Monday. Costa del Sol plans on terminating that contract. So right with now, the so ladies, today. with the ladies' <laughs> European tour because." They don't give a shit about it anymore because they got their Solheim Cup. Yeah. So they're going to be up a creek without a paddle there searching for a sponsor. Oh, by the way, they already have a sponsor who has expressed interest in this mm, already. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Aramco, who wants to get out of just the Aramco Team Series event and have a total, like a, a more arching uh, partnership, sponsorship with the Ladies European Tour. Um, and they would we would ultimately have the seizing ending event in Riyadh, and we, it would be the the race to Riyadh or whatever they want to title it. At the same time, we're still waiting on a future vote on a potential merger between the LPGA and the LET. While we have all this shit going on, what TC? What you're absolutely right. All of that stuff. There's so many signs happen. that this isn't going to be go but well, right? What's really going to happen here? Is that I guarantee you, Molly and Alex, Alex is the, the CEO, commissioner of the uh, Ladies European Tour, are gonna, they're going to put their heads down and they're going to try to figure this out to get this partnership merger thing, you know, signed up, closed. And then probably Alex will step away, go do something else, and, and we'll figure it out from there. I mean, how do you feel? It's been, it's been really, really bad. How do you this feel if you're Molly in the, or, 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 or uh, Mike Wan? Yeah. The U.S. Open champion, who's had a great Ryder Cup or uh, Solheim Cup, can't like can't even get a shot shown on the telecast. Yeah. I mean, it's it's it is appalling. Bad. I hope one thing I hope at the you know, silver lining is that I hope the check was a lot. Like, I hope they. But they, that's the thing. The I don't think it was. That they that they sold out for not a lot of money. My hope too, through situations like this, I always am like, well, maybe this is bad enough and yeah. it's like publicly embarrassing enough to spur actual change. And I wish I was confident that it would. I I don't really. Th I mean, next year Solheim will be much better yeah. on American soil. I, I have to believe 2026 will be better. But but fundamentally, when I think we talk I think the Netherlands are gonna be awesome. The broadcast and the investment and in, in how women's golf is presented. That's where I'm still. I I need to see a lot more action before I I'm optimistic from some it's of the like big it, players. It's like you are what your record says you are. What your record says that like you're disorganized, festering, fucking mess. Yeah. And you and you need to do a hell of a lot better. Well, it's and I think it's a chicken and egg thing with the networks. It's like. Well, we have to sell all these commercials in because, you know, we need to pay for it. And it's like, well, and like, well, no one, or we don't put it the, put it on TV because, like, no one's watching women's golf. It's like, well, no one's watching women's golf because it's not fun to watch. Right. You know, and like, you're not. Make you're, it feel important. Yeah, exactly. Make That's, elevated events feel fucking important. And before. Put some microphones you know, out there. Before, I know we're here. It's 1 a.m. right now, right? We're turning this week over, and it's going to be Ryder Cup week. And what are we going to have at the Ryder Cup? We're going to have inundated fucking coverage of updates of, of post-practice round pressers. We're going to have updates on 
who's where's people games at we're gonna have analysts fucking telling us who's gonna partner with who all this stuff we're gonna have the wall-to-wall live from coverage from fucking golf channel and there wasn't a single fucking emphasis put here on this event for these fucking women the best women from the united states and europe again golf channel nbc what the fuck man what the fuck (laughs) It's Cody's beyond, fired up. I love it. Well, it, it's I, I'm like Hell over yeah. it. Yeah, I'm honestly over it because it, everything like people telling us that they care and oh, it's a money thing and you don't know how contracts work and all this. Shit, it's just bullshit because the only reason why they continue to have the the bandload of women's because they don't care about it. They're telling us. They're showing us right now that they don't fucking care about it. They're they want to tell. They're just yeah. fucking. Like literally, oh, we have to do this. So we're going to put minimal effort into it. Yeah. Right. They won't get rid of it because they fucking need it. For why? Do you know, baby? It's a, it's a, it's a shield. It's, and I it's will a say shield. we had a conversation with one of the, the highest people in the game this week, <laughs> over an hour long conversation, discussing this very, very thing. It's a fucking shame. And I don't know why, because every time there's a women's golf summit or anything else like that, who is fucking front and center? The same players, the same, the same, the same people giving the same lip service that shouldn't shouldn't be in the room at all. How is that possible? Because and where is the accountability? Because there's and never I'll any accountability. Again, Molly, I know you listen to this podcast. You have support. Yeah, there are people in your corner that are willing to help you. You just have to ask them, reach out to them. If you want to generate more support amongst your players for your initiatives or figure out what your initiatives are, go just beat up the, like, like go on the war path here. Yeah. And you got a lot of people that will support you. Hell yeah. Boys, that felt cathartic. Um, it's been a long show. It's been a long week. It's been an amazing week. As Cody said, we're going to, flip this uh Cody we're all flying home Cody you're going to lead live shows for the Ryder Cup we're going to have DJ Well hold on a second I okay. want to get you know people all fired up there I'm not leading Solly will be hosting he'll be on the mic but I will be I'm producing sorry, pr- as well pr- production wise yes. you will be facilitating live shows Solly DJ and Kevin Van Valkenburg will be on site in Rome the boys are flying over uh tonight and uh boys genuinely genuinely enjoyed this week i'm glad we got to do it this was something we had circled all year really for two years um this was i I know we just spent a lot of time bitching but there was so much good here the golf was good and it was a great time hanging out with you blokes we wouldn't bitch if we like you like everything we witnessed today was awesome and i just i'm really really sorry that that atmosphere and environment wasn't wasn't available to the viewers at home that sucks because the ladies put on a hell of a show all those god if you are still watching this we're down to one camera we thank you (laughs) sincerely for sticking with us Cody and i are leaving for the airport in like two hours (laughs) if you're listening whenever you're listening thank you for listening um i got something for you biggie yeah please this year we decided not only to invest in the uh, women's professional game i think uh, you are definitely the the you know you are spearheading that effort. But not only that, more discussion around the women's game. But we also brought in live shows. Yeah, and that's something that we had not done before for women's professional golf. This wraps up 2023 LPGA, LET, whatever it is, live shows, and it's been a, an absolute blast doing them all the way back from Chevron to you know our uh, KPMG week. Um, U.S. Women's Open, obviously going to London and and having you, uh, you know, lock us out of our house. But uh, it's been an absolute blast. So uh, thank you for spearheading the, the effort there. Thank he you guys for riding been, with me. It's been a blast. Uh, yeah, Schuster. That's that's my second Solheim Cup. I don't plan on missing one for a long time. It's it's an awesome, awesome event, and the people you meet here. It's a fun menagerie of different. Different people from all over the world, different backgrounds, and and just people that are willing to put themselves out there and like like traveling to kind of off the wall stuff. Yeah, Neil, any parting thoughts? 
Well, I, I would echo what TC said there. It almost feels like a subculture of golf. And I think that's a, a bad thing, like a shame of <laughs> it, it shouldn't. It should feel like a, a bigger, uh, more people should know how awesome the Solheim Cup is. And in general, just the LPGA and women's game. So I'm glad I got to see it firsthand for the first time. I had a great time. A couple thank yous real quick. So I first uh, shout out to the volunteer. I think she was like 16 year old girl from Ireland. Yeah, who thanked us all? Awesome! I know she's if she's big, listening to this, she's, still she's a big podcast. Thank supporter. you. Uh, the other one, Noose, who we've talked through. Na- uh, Naos. Naos, excuse me, from the Canary Islands. Yeah, a long, long delightful. time, but uh, you know, she obviously very, very familiar with Spanish golf. Gave us good, very good insight. This when we came to like junior Solheim yeah. stuff. Yeah, that happened earlier in this week. That by the way, growing the game that was invite only, so people couldn't even go watch it grow. Europe, Europe those, crushed the U.S. The seas. We got wow, the last man. TC. Wow, so, hate that. My guy but, Tom, who knew what, uh, loved our use of Alfred Plea. In, yes, in Strap. Another one of the volunteers. Yeah. And and last but certainly not least, like I think uh, the relationships that we formed uh, with the BBC and the Sky team. Um, I, I can't the, the sky the sky sky broadcasting or the sky team uh, uh, well, Delta sky and KLM and Air France. Here. Uh, we'll get into that on the trap draw, but I think I might shock you guys with my decision and, and response on what happened with the new mm. you know levels. So watch of sky the space. Right? There's, watch there's, the space. There's some talks yeah. going on in the background. Exactly. Uh, so maybe yeah, a, shout maybe out a framework. We started this week with uh, Sophie Walker. Sophie, don't call me Sophia uh, <laughs> Walker and. Uh, you know, just just a ton of fun with with Ian, Cat, uh, Amy, and and the rest of the crew. So it's a blast. I can't believe we have to wait till next year to do this. One last shout out: Media Dining was really good this week. Yeah, really. Yeah, good. it was. I, I, it was a local company. Like again, like a good example of hey, give opportunity to a local company, and and I thought they did. I thought they did a really good job. Uh, and then the Wi-Fi in the media center was a disgrace on Friday, and they totally turned it around Saturday, yeah, Sunday. It was great. It. Yeah. So yeah. praise progress. Those turbo boosters, as as all. We love coming to these events, I think, because it's a lot easier to work. We get better access. Um, and I think a lot of that goes to uh, Christina and the LPGA comm staff. Yeah. And want to shout them out because all they of them hard. absolutely crush it. It was a shit show this week. Every single question that we had. They not only were like, yeah, it sucks, man. Like, uh, like we would commiserate a little, a little bit with us, but also be like, I'm going to get you an answer and it's going to be a, which yes doesn't normally need. happen for sure. When you get on site, it's for like, sure. oh, you got to go talk to somebody else. Yeah. So, so that's uh, a accountability. Great shout out. Love those guys. They're accountable. Absolutely. They're doing fucking great things, elevating their product, uh, socials written everywhere. Good. I think we're good. All right. We're good. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Cheers and crack on.